All right, now it's time to talk about WWF Monday Night Raw for April 2nd, 2001. But Johnny, before we get into that, let's take a look at what was going on in the world of wrestling around this time by looking at the Wrestling Observer Newsletter. Of Ooh, course, this is going to be interesting. Uh, I guess yeah. before you get into it, WCW had just ended last week. Was the last it Nitro. just got bought. It was the yeah, last Nitro of all time um, ever. Was last Monday, yeah. so it should be interesting to hear what you got to say. We have reviewed uh, that Nitro as well, by the way. So check the uh, the archives for our review on the last Nitro ever. Yes, we have. So from the Observer, April second, two thousand and one. We've gone through about uh, this area of the Observer, so I tried to pick out stuff we haven't talked about before. Some of this you might have heard before. Some of it might it won't be. Um, okay. So from the Observer, April second, two thousand and one. The purchase of World Championship Wrestling by WWF Entertainment this past week, combined with the ending of all wrestling programming on the Turner Networks, changes the entire landscape of the pro wrestling industry forever. Last year, when WCW was first put on the market, the negotiations ran in the hundreds of millions of dollars. And there wasn't even the consideration the product wouldn't keep two valuable prime time slots on two of the strongest cable stations. This past week, TBS and TNT canceled wrestling. <laughs> <laughs> Fusion Media Ventures, the company that had uh, been announced in January as the buyer for WCW, still was in the game trying to buy the company. All they had to do was clear a cable outlet uh, with several major stations out there. And this is wrestling. Uh, and its ratings are still strong. One would think people would beg for the product, but as ECW found out months earlier, which caused Paul Heyman to throw in the towel and accept the verdict the current landscape had given, this wasn't the case. USA Network publicly washed their hands of wrestling and didn't even want to negotiate. E uh, had no interest, and after a last-ditch attempt uh, to make a deal with Fox for FX, failed. Fusion had to pull out. So no fuck. If they could have got on any fucking network... There was a chance it would have survived. If you want to talk about biggest bag fumbles of all time, Eric Bischoff took the biggest <laughs> L here, man. He did not buy it. Unbelievable. Because he didn't have a TV deal and said the product was worthless. Well, WWE is still making money off the deal and they are forever going to make money off yeah, that deal. Yeah, man. So you're the biggest idiot of all time for not buying that. And like, you couldn't, like, yeah, like, okay, they didn't have a TV deal right then, but surely you, if they would have bought it, and fucking tried to figure, like, they would have found somewhere, right? Surely. Yes. Uh, Obviously, it was a time-sensitive thing, but, like, they would have found somewhere. And, you know, the, the, the fucking tape library is super valuable. I mean, obviously, they maybe didn't realize how valuable uh, compared to what WWE did. Dude, do you think Eric Bischoff, their, maybe he just wasn't in the game yet, like, as far as, like, a TV guy? Because now he's, like, very into TV and, like, how everything works. I feel like sure. he would have the hindsight. Was that like, him just, was that him, like... Him and Hervey, like, had they already been doing uh, shit whatever together? Whatever Fusion Media was, or Fusion Net, or Fusion Media, whatever that... Fusion, yeah, Fusion, yeah. Whatever yeah. that was, that was there. I think that might have been before Bischoff, Hervey, or maybe they just got okay, into it or something, sure. but... Right, okay. Dude, they made the biggest mistake here. I'm, That's fucking unbelievable. I think Chris Jericho says, like, once he found out how much it actually went for, he was like, I don't... Because I don't... Do you know the number? Yeah, is I just looked actually... it up, actually. Um, oh, what is it? So, WWF bought the name and the logo for $2.5 million in 2001. So just what the name the and the logo. Fuck? So they only had the name and the logo when they like did the invasion stuff. Yeah. Um, And then they purchased the entire video library for $1.7 million after that. So the total that they paid for the entire name, logo, and video library was $2.4 million. That's fucking... Which is like super... One, wait, 3.4 or 2.4? Or 4.2, did I say... Oh, oh, sorry. Yeah. So yeah. it was, it was 2. Million. Point, wow. 2.5 million for the name and the logo. Yeah. And then 1.7 for the, for the tape wow. library. And then that's $4.2 million. Yeah. I, th I think Chris Jericho was like, dude, if I would have fucking known, I, I would have bought WCW. Dude, you could have. Like a lot of those guys could have. Like Big Show had a lot of money for his contract. 4.2 million that's for like WCW. A low, low, what low, the low, fuck? Low, 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 low. Yeah. Um, the talent that were under contract uh, to WWF at this point via WWF buying WCW were Lance Storm, Chuck Palumbo, Sean O'Hare, Mark Jindrak, Mike Awesome, Elix Skipper, Shane Helms, Shannon Moore, Stacey Keebler, Chava Guerrero Jr., Mike Sanders, Hugh Morris, Sean Stasia, Kaz Hayashi, Yun Yang, and Billy Kidman. All of these wrestlers were picked up because they had 90-day cycles, which means they can be cut from their current deal, and in most cases will, and then will be renegotiated with by WWF and Jim Ross. Now the wrestlers WWF don't appear to want. Uh, I guess there was a meeting held this past week uh, about this with some of the main creative forces in WWF. Uh, while uh, we've only been given sketchy, sketchy indication as it regards to everyone, every name on this list except except for Bigelow, Vicious Flair, Duggan, and uh, Stevie Ray, 
were specifically told we were specifically told that most were in agreement they didn't want them. So these are the wrestlers that were on the we don't want list. Rick Steiner, Jim Duggan, Bam Bam Bigelow, Stevie Ray, Animal, Jeff Jarrett, Lex Luger, Buff Bagwell, Dustin Rhodes, Sid Vicious, Medasia, Ms. Jones, David Flair, Chronic, and Vampiro. Yeah, Chronic, of course. Get them Dude, on the list. What the fuck? What did Bam Bam had heat? What from leaving? Probably WWF. I don't know. I guess so. Jarrett I mean, had mad. I mean, Jarrett Luger. I mean, uh, Buff, Dustin. Though? Buff must have a really low deal to get over there, well, huh? I well, he does. He comes over for like a. Yeah, he does. He does end up fucking taking something low for sure, right? Because he does end up showing up for a cup of coffee. Um, yeah, they probably gave him like a trial. Here's one one night contract. See what you yeah, can some do of them are fucking weird. Whatever. Like Stevie Ray. I don't understand. Sid Vicious. Okay, I, like some of these, you know, guys that worked in WWF. Rick Steiner seems like a fucking weird one. Miss Jones. I, all right, I don't they even know. They must just be like they're not even on our radar. Like not that they have heat. They're not even like, Vampiro. Yeah, I guess not. Okay. He's got a mouth, you know. He probably said some shit about WWF. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, yeah, you're right. There was a lot of people like that. I bet Stevie Ray said a bunch of shit about WWF. Sounds like it. Stevie Ray invented podcasts to talk shit about WWF back yeah, then. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. Um, I just want to put this in perspective right now uh, about the sale of WCW to WWE because you said uh, 4.2 2 million was the uh, total right. that was done. Uh, you want to know what? Minecraft sold to Microsoft. No. Oh no, what? <laughs> when Microsoft bought Minecraft, they paid two point five billion dollars. No. <laughs> <laughs> the fucking the fucking blocks. <laughs> the blocks were two point five billion dollars. I'm sure. I they feel like a guy eating back, an apple though. in Minecraft, Tony. <laughs> But I feel like that's that's incredible. Just to put that in like scope of like how things uh, were like a whole organization with my, millions people of liked people employed. Minecraft and way more than they liked wrestling ever. That I think is true. so. But that's just it's crazy Fuck. to think like the the cost, uh, you know, the scope Damn. of things. That's yeah. crazy. A, a major what if in wrestling history, Tony? If we bought WCW, dude. Major what if in wrestling is if we bought Minecraft? <laughs> That'd be crazy. <laughs> And ate apples in it. <laughs> that would have been crazy. <laughs> uh, Rob Van Dam taped an episode of NBC's Spy TV. Meltzer says, since it really doesn't matter now, it can be revealed that Van Dam was in serious negotiations with WCW and Bischoff. Uh, and, uh, with WCW and Bischoff was attempting to keep it quiet to bring him in as a huge surprise on the restart. Yeah, so, that was the that was always the rumor. I remember damn. hearing about that. That would have been gonna, fucking crazy. They were going to close down, come back as like, Rob Van Dam, one of the main guys, that'd be crazy. Whoa. Yeah, man. I mean, because especially with how long it takes for WWF to, you know, strap them up big. I mean, I, I already obviously, I think, you know, they have him in some main event stuff uh, post invasion. You know, he does shit with Triple H and all, but like, I, 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 I would have been fucking super curious to see how what RVD does in WCW, unless he's like putting the fuck Misfits in Action Two. <laughs> oh my, Natural Born Thrillers Three. Yeah, he's he's Glacier's brother. <laughs> some bullshit like that. No, I don't know. Uh, at the last Nitro, Luger and Bagwell were still acting like no matter what anyone was saying, when push came to shove, they were big-time players and would have a job. Well, sorry about that. Hey, Luger, you know, whatever. For whatever reason, Luger just never got picked up. He never even had a one-off run or, you know, like a He never comes. But they, he's a, they put him in the Hall of Fame, though, right? Yeah, they did. But, but like that, he, like, doesn't, he doesn't so come in He didn't in even for, have a cup of coffee there, no, you know, like, no. even come in for, he didn't even come back for like I don't even know if he's ever come back for like a one night only type of for WWF? appearance or anything. Yeah, like I don't no, even know no, like a I don't Legends think so. Night or anything. Nothing really. I don't, which is crazy. Not that I can think of. Obviously, he does something in TNA for like he's like in and out of TNA a little bit. Um, yeah, I'm just thinking about the way he left WWF. I guess that really pissed him off. Still, I mean, that but... really fucked them big style. Yeah, that made that like legitimized Nitro I forever. Know, but even then, they still brought Hogan. If there's money to be sure, made, Vince yeah. will, you know, Vince would always. Especially in 2011, back. Luger worked with WWE on their wellness policy. I did not know this. Oh, okay. Well, that's a good idea. He I helped mean... them uh, get away with doing drugs. <laughs> <laughs> In <laughs> oh, wow. uh, WWF news, the plan for Mania is to run the show itself for nearly four hours as opposed to doing a one-hour post-game show as uh, some of the advertising lists. This part, I couldn't fucking believe. I guess because I was not uh, a dirt cheat fucking kid back at this point. Like, 2001, I was only like, what was I, nine? Oh, yeah. man. I, I definitely was on the internet, though. 
at that point. Yeah, you had to be. Um, but I did not. So it says here, as of last week, the Austin turn with Vince was still on the books, even though the crowd reaction to Rock indicates that people right now don't want it. The Triple H turn may be delayed. I had no fucking idea about the Austin turn. I feel like it would have broke my little heart if I had known about it before it happened. That would have been no, fucking I had unbelievable. No, I had no clue either. Even I was a dirty guy because I read all about like that yeah. was going out of business and all that. And uh, Sure. But I, I never heard about the Austin turn ever. No. Uh, I do know that The Rock was getting super booed going into the match, though. Yeah, uh, well, because like, it's in fucking Texas match. especially. Well, even then on the Raws leading up to it before yeah. then, it was like totally in favor of Austin. So I Well, don't they kind of made Rock a heel too. They were doing the show with Debra. You know what I mean? Like they weren't like entire. Like he wasn't super baby. I try to for- forget her that the Rock Deborah had to manage the Rock or something. That yes, was like, she was like a fucking big crux of the story. That was the dumbest <laughs> part of the story, but yeah. Like now, I feel like it's way easier. Like big turns like that don't really like that's like common practice. Like finding out about something like that. Now. Like I mean, like uh, spoilers for uh, something coming up here. If you uh, uh, but supposedly like they're gonna turn Trish. You know what I mean? Like, like that already is already being talked about. So, like, stuff like that, like, feels normal to me. But, like, finding out that Austin was turning at the main event of Mania would have been fucked up. Dude, it was, like, for me, it was such a shocker because they go, the match is now no disqualification. And I was like, what the hell? Yeah. They just announced it at, during the main yeah, event. Yeah, like, okay. you're right. And I had no idea what was going no, on. No, I just thought, I was like, oh, they're just going to fucking fight. Little shitty Johnny had no fucking idea. Dude, I don't know what the fuck's crazy. going on. Uh, let's see. An observer from April 9th, 2001. Combat Zone Wrestling on April 4th in Dover, Delaware at Froggy's Bar was headlined by John Zandig versus Tommy Dreamer for their heavyweight title. I put that in here because we watched this. <laughs> this is on Patreon.com slash Deadlock. That's where Dreamer went over like immediately after ECW officially closed, right? Yeah, this was like, this was the day that ECW like legally closed. And, uh, so Zandig versus Dreamer. Uh, for the CZW, I don't think I don't remember it being for the CZW title though. I don't think that was true. I think it went to a no contest or something. I don't remember. Well, you can check it out on our Patreon. It's fucking very fucking funny. Uh, ECW sucks and it's always sucked. I think it's what happened. <laughs> yeah, Dreamer like does a pro CZW fuck everything else <laughs> promo. He's like, this is the real shit here. Okay, cool. Uh, in WCW news, I didn't know about this either. One of the reasons Flair's interviews on Nitro over the fa- past few months weren't up to his usual standard were because he was banned by management from saying woo. Johnny Ace told him he couldn't do it anymore because management felt that he was playing the role of a CEO and that a CEO wouldn't be saying woo. Flair never could get into his rhythm without it. In his interview on the last night show, the band was lifted and he did his best interview in a long time. While nobody directly has said it, the feeling is Ace was acting under orders from Bischoff. Okay. All right. Well, that's, I don't know. How do you like, yeah, that's like fucking telling Stone Cold he can't say Austin 316. Or, I mean, maybe telling Stone Cold he couldn't do what for a minute might have been fucking pretty good for yeah, the business. Yeah, that's a great idea. But- <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's crazy, though. But I just thought that was Flair's, like, CEO. I didn't really think it was, like, a ban or anything. I just, like, yeah, oh, that's they, Flair's, like, told like, him not to do it. the company. Yeah. Wow, okay. Uh, Brock Lesnar appeared on Wrestling Observer Live on March 29th talking about his background. Uh, he was first approached his junior year by Joe Briscoe and Jim Ross. Uh, he had off. He had also gotten offers from WCW through Bischoff and New Japan through Brad uh, Ray, uh, Rangins and Inoki. Uh, he didn't want to. He also yeah. He so he had fucking WCW and New Japan both wanted him. Uh, it says here Brock didn't want to work in Japan, although he had a story about doing a 60 minute sparring session with Inoki and marveling at his conditioning for his age. He said at one point a few years ago he was interested in the UFC after meeting Ken and Frank Shamrock, but he had never considered it as a viable option over the last few years because the money wasn't good enough. I just thought it was funny because Brock goes to both of those fucking places. He goes to <laughs> fucking New Japan and UFC. You're right. The money was right at the time for Brock and UFC. I mean, by the time it. he fucking goes, yeah, it's just like crazy. I, I, God, how did? How is there not footage of sixty minute Brock and Anoki sparring? <laughs> Fuck, Bro, that sounds I see incredible. That so bad. That's Bro, probably insane. Bro, you imagine, dude? Think about like uh, WCW reboot with Brock Lesnar and RVD. Oh <laughs> shit! <Sure, laughs> yo, oh my god. That to run be... by Eric Bischoff. Hogan's yeah. out because Hogan's they say on will never work again. Yeah. Vampiro's still. All the young Vampiro's boys. gone. <laughs> Stevie Ray's gone. Get about yeah. it. Buff Bagels. Wow, that would have been, been crazy. Cr- yeah, or, I mean, I imagine a bunch of those ECW guys would have been called in, right? Yeah, but in hindsight, like you know, WWE had like the perfect Brock Lesnar story. Like they brought him in. Oh and he my was, like, god, protected. Oh my god, so, would that have happened? In, you know, I don't know. Probably not, because I, you yeah. know, I can't imagine they would have did that because you know, like. Not that Goldberg was still fresh, but they're not going to bring Brock in and do that with him. Not that WWF did that, but like Brock was super fucking protected, you know. Like, yeah, you're right. If it was best case scenario, and he came in like 
exactly how he is now, that would be incredible, oh man. God. WCW would have came back yeah, that would have been strong. Nice. Uh, and the last few things here. Observe from April 16th, 2001. The latest on Hulk Hogan is that he's still in negotiations with Universal regarding a possible Hulk Hogan restaurant and getting them back into a wrestling promotion. Bostomania but, too? Oh yeah, brother. <laughs> 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 they need the chicken tetrazzini, dude. We need to get back into the chicken tetrazzini business, brother. No side you, break, dude. And maybe you can run Hulk Hogan Pro, dude, or I'm the booker. How about that, brother? Oh my... Hulk Hogan, how, how, was there really, a, like, did Hogan ever, like, I guess TNA he had a lot of say in, but did he, like, fully book a company on his own ever? I, don't, mm. I, th- I think it was usually, like, him and Bischoff or something like that, you know what I mean? Him he, and Jimmy always, Hart or whatever. Yeah, right? like, I don't know if it was ever, like, always. He had always, the, like, Hulk Hogan's, what was it, micro championship wrestling or whatever? Dude, but I don't how know have we never that. watched that? I don't know. That uh, might have to go on the book somewhere. Yeah, else. we gotta fucking figure I, that out. Yeah, I but, have no idea. But I don't think he ever was like the main dude because he always had someone else. He was the main brother. <laughs> back in the day, brother. I don't know. <laughs> uh, Jun Kasai of Big Japan Wrestling uh, made a surprise appearance on April fourth, the CZW show, doing a run-in on Zandig versus Dreamer, which ended with a ton of wrestlers brawling with barbed wire, light bulbs, and tables. This is the part where I want to talk about because I need to find this. On April 7th in Sewell, New Jersey, he did a dive off the top of a building and reported 35 feet legit through two tables, which may be the highest <laughs> dive in tables uh, through a table in wrestling history. Is this right? 35 that's, foot high fucking Jude Kasai splash? That's incredible. We have to find that. We have to find that somewhere. That sounds fucking awesome. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to try to find that on Season of Studios. I imagine that's on there. Um, and last piece, uh, a couple things here. Uh, the... 5-9 first WCW taping in Trenton, New Jersey has been postponed, and the first taping now looks to be on June 9th at a site yet to be determined for an uh, for an air date that evening on a three-hour tape delay, although the date is also tentative. If not, the first taping would be June 13th in Fairfax, Virginia. Uh, this entire WCW operation is very much a work in progress as a roster hasn't been established. There's no front office, referee crew, announcers, agents, or anything, and we're only a few weeks away from that first taping. Tentative plans for the first pay-per-view show to be in September. So uh, even up to here, like, you know, we're a few weeks out after they got bought, mm-hmm. and there's still, like, an idea, you know, at least outside, I don't know how much internally, but at least externally from Dirty guys that there's going to be a fucking WCW show. You remember we watched, I think we found the trailer, we talked about this a while yeah, ago. Yeah, I yeah, yeah. But there was a teaser for that There was, like, live a, event, a local ad spot, right? Yeah, so it, it was on the books, and they yeah. were trying to do something. But sure. Dude, if, I feel like... I don't know. It's hindsight 2020. Maybe sure. it was the best. Case. Maybe they shouldn't have ever rebooted it. You know, I, but like, but, I just wish I would have, it wish it would have happened just so we would have known, you know what I mean? Like just got to experience what it was, would have been like. That's the thing. Like they always, the problem with like uh WWE is like, they, they can't, it feels like they can't do like the side project promotion. Like yeah. even when they were trying, when they rebooted ECW is still under the WWE banner. Sure. Like maybe yeah, if it was like right. it's if it like I always heard the rumors like Shane McMahon is gonna buy ECW and it's gonna be its own thing and yeah. then Shane McMahon and then it became Shane McMahon's buying WCW well, like and he's Raw gonna do his was own gonna be thing. Nitro shit like that right yeah and Thunder was gonna be the Sma- or, yeah yeah SmackDown, Smackdown was gonna be the WWE Raw, or Raw yeah, yeah I think something like that yeah yeah which sounds crazy for them to do but they just they should have like made its own thing and just toured on its own but yeah. I don't know maybe in hindsight it was a bad idea. Well, last part here, the original role for Shawn Michaels at WrestleMania 17, I didn't, I've never heard of this either, was that he was going to interfere in Triple H versus Undertaker, uh, presumably to screw Triple H over and lead to a singles match between the two of them. There's no official on Michaels yet. We're told his name is simply not a subject anyone is talking about in the company. So, that hmm. was, I, 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 have you ever heard of that? I don't think I ever did. Uh, what that was Shawn doing at so the time? Weird. He was just not even in the company, right? I don't think so. I, I mean, he that might have been, he was still doing his school and shit like that. I mean, maybe he was coming in to be, like, a fucking ref every so often or some bullshit. But, uh, like, I think he would make a, like, in 2000, I definitely remember him making appearances. So, like, I don't know if he had shown up in 2001 yet. Um, like, obviously, he did commission. Because he did shot. the casket match in 98, right? Right. And then that's yeah. when he, like, retired. And then he did the match at WrestleMania, was it 14? Yeah. And then... He makes he an appearance much- on T. Uh, he makes an appearance at WWE of New York during Armageddon on December tenth, two thousand, and then he's also training people at the Texas Wrestling Academy. Um, and then Sean leaves the academy in two thousand two. Uh, okay. So yeah. So I, 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 it sounds like I mean, if there was an, if there was anything floated that he was going to come back for that, it sounds like he was ready to 
go in 2001, which is also crazy to think about because he doesn't come back until 2002, I'm going to say. Yeah, it was With, 2002. Uh, Nash, right? With the NWO stuff. Yeah, and yeah, then, exactly, yeah. But he doesn't actually, like, wrestle until whenever after that. I don't remember. He did the stuff with Triple H, like, at SummerSlam. Right. Was it SummerSlam 2002? I think that's, that's right. what it was. Yeah, I think that's yeah, right. Yeah, so he could, like, theoretically, they could have ran the entire program they did. Just a year like, earlier. The feud, the feud with Triple H and all yeah. that, but then they wouldn't have had the, uh, the episode we have tonight. Um, yeah. yeah, and speaking of that episode, let's get into it. Let's talk about Monday Night Raw for April 2nd, 2001. Raw after WrestleMania 17. Do, 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 do. All right, now it's time to talk about WWF Monday Night Raw for April 2nd, 2001, Tony. Ooh, what a, or, what a yes. t- trip back in time, let me tell you. We are the Raw after WrestleMania 17. Uh, we figured this would be appropriate to, to watch because this is the Monday after WrestleMania. So we are... Yes. Uh, Doing a Raw after WrestleMania. So we start off with the uh, usual intro and actually no cold open. No cold open. You think they'd do a recap of WrestleMania or something, you know? Tell they us, don't. He made a deal with the devil, you know, that kind of Yeah, intro. they I don't do any of that shit. It. They might, you know, I was thinking, was it because of the Limp Biscuit song? They maybe didn't put that, but then later they do. So then yeah. it, maybe it wasn't that. It's, I don't know what yeah, it was. Yeah, no. It's my life in a box and George's meat. <laughs> well, they had no competition. There's no competition. It doesn't matter. We do it. No. no competition. It doesn't matter. People no, watching. WrestleMania right. just happened. No competition. Pew, 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 pew. So we start off uh, the shot of uh, WWE from New York showing all the fans there. And they're showing crowd signs as we come back to the arena. Austin's a sellout. Austin why, sold Steve, out. Why? 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 Yeah. Well, why? J- JR says, our new WWE champion has been crowded in Stone Cold. But why? Why has the Rattlesnake sold his soul to Satan himself? Uh, JR is also on commentary with Paul Heyman, which is like my favorite commentary duo ever. Really? Um, okay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. That's my, that's my, that's my, uh, it's them or it's Tanae and Don West. That's my fucking, those are my guys. Dude, because Paul Heyman was very annoying here and I felt like they were, uh. That's why I liked it. No, JR not, get not, pissed. Well, yeah, but not even that. I felt like they were trying to do Jerry the King Lawler, Paul Heyman here tonight. And I'll, we'll get oh, it to later when sure, we get into okay. it. It's like, oh, because he gets very, a little weird. It was yeah. very not Paul Heyman. <laughs> You're it was right, very okay. like not him now. But yeah. I could see where they wanted that color guy and Paul. You sure. know, it was it was interesting though watching him piss off Jim Ross all night. Which Dude, is that was the whole fantastic. thing. Yeah, he like went out of his way to like fucking poke at JR. It was, and it happens even during this show. Uh, out comes Stephanie McMahon, and she has she has a strap, Tony. I didn't know what she. At first, I I swear that she had a noose in her hand, and I was like, Why oh does God. she have a noose? I really didn't know why <laughs> she had a noose in her hand. Signal the death of I WCW don't... by hanging Ted Turner here tonight. <laughs> She's gonna kill WWF and bring back ECW. I think is what Ooh. she wanted to do. Well, Jerry, no, she definitely has a leather strap on her hand, and somebody gets in the ring and she talks about uh, last night at WrestleMania. Trish had the nerve to slap my dad, Vince McMahon, right in the face. Of slut, slut, slut. My I'll come. daddy, yeah. <laughs> oh, slut, God damn, slut. man. She can't say anything she's without she's being done a nothing. slut. Yeah. She's talking about her dad and her husband and uh, slut, slut. Oh, maybe she's not with Triple H at this point, is she? Uh, the, she's still Stephanie McMahon Helmsley. I don't remember. Right, okay. Just sure. She is coming into my time. So I feel I like he so, pedigreed yeah. her like, recently, or it happens, or it did, or it didn't. Maybe sure, not, yeah. we didn't know. Who, who knows? Well, dude, there's uh, fucking Stephanie's talking here. And then they pan to the crowd and show this sign. It's a drawn picture of Trish Stratus with her. Fu- she's naked. It's her fucking tits out and everything. It's just her fucking titties are censored. I said, holy fucking, why are they even showing this? What the fuck is going on here? Uh, oh, yeah. Stephanie says, after everything, my dad has done for Trish. And Heyman says, and to her, and Steph says, payback is a bitch. So she's not only going to kick your ass, she's going to whip it. Uh, uh, she's she's requested and granted a whipping match with Trish here tonight in this very ring. Uh, but this, she said, this night is not just about Trish. It's about of someone of importance. So allow me to introduce you to the most more important man in sports entertainment today. My dad, Vince McMahon. And Vince comes out. He's got a big fucking red box in his hand. A, a gift, you, I guess. Asshole. Asshole. Yeah. <laughs> asshole. Do they do that anymore? I don't know if... if has the I feel like the asshole chant has maybe lost in time. Yeah, I don't uh, think they do that asshole chant anymore, really. I love bring back the asshole chant, please. Uh, so Vince comes out with a big red box. Uh, Vince and Stephanie hug, and, and Stephanie leaves, and 
And Vince says, uh, I would like a little respect. Uh, and he's, he talks about, you know, uh, the fans wondering why he's happy and why he's smiling. He says, I have the privilege of personally handing the WWE Championship uh, as soon as he arrives to Stone Cold Steve Austin. And as many of you might say, Mr. McMahon, uh, you shouldn't be happy because Trish, Trish Stratus, a, a woman whom I heaped lavish gifts on, you know, fur coats and diamond rings, slapped me in my face at WrestleMania. That didn't make me happy in my wife, Linda. Obviously, Trish hadn't given her sufficient medication for that week. My <laughs> wife, he says, my wife now, get this, my wife hauls my, off, my get wife. this, uh, my wife hauls off and kicks me in the gonad. And what kind of, what kind of woman would do such a thing? Uh, he talks about Mick Foley uh, beating him up, hitting him in the corner and fucking hitting him in the knee and the head. And then my very son Shane takes a garbage can and dra- jams it into my chest and flies from that corner. All the way to this corner and drop kicks that can into my head. So no, maybe I shouldn't be happy, but you know, as all the old expression, all is well that ends well. And uh, WrestleMania ended just fine for me. And that's when I saw a sign behind Vince's head that said "Rock sucks cock." That's so it awesome. Seem like everyone, everyone was not on the Rock side. No, still nobody. And people, I don't think anybody really liked the Rock at this time. Well, they did. No, but they didn't. which is weird. I don't know why. I mean, he was still the fucking Rock. You know, because he was, because it had become. Apparent that The Rock was the guy who takes the title into Mania and loses it. That's kind of how. Well, Rock we is all also saw that. leaving here soon to go to Hollywood. Yeah, he's going to do them. But Scorpion I don't know if people knew that yet. Mummy Returns, Scorpion. Scorpion King Returns. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> he does the Scorpion King after this, right? Isn't that what he leaves? Um, or Mummy Returns is that? the first one, right? Do do I think that? Mummy Returns is up first. I think. But he does. Um, but that's what he's leaving for, right? Sure. Yes. Exactly. Okay. So Vince says, well, now I've had a chance to listen to the play-by-play on that match of Mania. Now, with that in mind, good old Jr., I've got a question for you. And Vince walks over to the announce table and he says, JR, did you or did you not call Stone Cold an SOB? And JR says, hell no. Now, JR has like the announcer's headset on and Vince has a mic in his mouth. So it sounds like nobody hears this because nobody reacts. No, there's no way that anyone hears it. It's just the TV crowd. Yeah. But like Vince is on that mic. How's that work? So they can hear, he can hear Vince, but the crowd can't hear him i don't know it's weird that's the king yeah, it's, i don't know if they shut the mic off because they knew it i don't know what it was but anyway vince says don't deny that don't deny that did you say that stone cold sold out to the devil himself and jr says you damn right <laughs> jr well vince says let me think about that for a moment let's see at the Austin. at this moment i thought well vince is gonna bring him in and beat the crap out of jr they're gonna have someone come down I, and beat it does happen on SmackDown, and I think we did talk about that SmackDown, and that's Jr. interviews Austin in the ring, and that's where he fucking ah, uh, it beats was the that. Shit yeah, but I, I assumed it was happening right now, right here at this. Sure, moment. yeah, yeah. Uh, well, uh, Vince says, when you think about a Jr., I'm not the devil, although the devil is a powerful individual. So I guess we do have a bit in common. And Vince just fucking, fucking rambles on for goddamn ever dude, this here. Was, this he, is horrible. This was not he good. Talks forever here, dude. I'm like, holy shit. It's like. 15 minutes in and Vince just won't shut the fuck up. Uh, so he says, when I got to the arena night, a bunch of you gave me a gift in honor of me being here in Texas. And I want to share that with you. And Vince put, uh, goes over to that red box and he pulls out a 10 gallon hat <laughs> and puts it on his head. And he says, yeah, I'm a real Texan now. He says, he does this crazy strut around the ring. He says, yeah, I can step in some cow crap and I can chew tobacco. Yeah, I got some red all down the back of my neck right here in my back. I'm a real Texan. And whoever got me this hat, let me just say. And he puts the hat down on the mat. He says, when I think of Texas, he rubs his boot on the hat. Uh, he's, this is what I think when I think of Texas. And he rubs his boot on the hat and fucking stomps it out. And all of a sudden, if you're some mill, oh my. Rock comes out with a very interesting hairline. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Bad. I don't remember this. Like, I don't remember this rock look in the games. I don't remember this hair exactly like this, but it's like, it looks kind they, of fucked up. You I don't know, it's like, uh, I've always heard rumors that like, oh, they have to have big muscles. Like some wrestlers make them have big muscles. I wonder if The Rock's like one of those guys that makes him have a good hairline. You know, what I mean? <laughs> he tells 2K make my hair it's look. It's like good in the contract, you know, you got to make me look good. Motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> no, that hairline Stone, was ridiculous. Stone Cold says make me really bald. <laughs> yeah, you're right. <laughs> well, The Rock comes out here and uh, Rock says The Rock. We'll make it simple. The Rock is demanding a rematch for the title. The Rock is demanding it here tonight, right here in Texas. And Vince says, Rock, Stone Cold's not even here. It's not fucking happening. Rock Why says, does Stone Cold never arrive on time? I always wondered that about this guy. Is there 
ever a show where the he's Austin doesn't late. show up? He's yeah. always late every time. Someone should look that up. If, uh, if find a Raw where Austin's already at the building when the show starts. I guess starts. there's Raw's where he's opened and they've done, he's got a promo at the start of the show, but still. Oh, okay, maybe. A but lot of times The Rock is, or yeah. Austin is always arriving late. He's always yeah. showing up late. Triple but. H is always on time. Triple yeah. H, except for tonight. He's yeah, got to cut a 20 minute promo. Ever. He's got to be That's there. That's what early. I mean. Yeah, Triple H already <laughs> with the fucking beginning promo. <laughs> Uh, Rock reiterates, he says, let's one more time. The Rock wants a return match. I, he called a return match. I like that. That was cool. Uh, and if you don't give it to Rock right now, The Rock is going to find a way for you to change your mind. And Rock starts fucking walking down the ramp. He's going to fuck Vince up. Vince says and no Vince, oh. like four times, I think. He's like, no. Yeah, no, calm down, Rock. Got Rock, really calm down. Calm down. I can't give you your match tonight, and I'm not going to. But if you lay a hand on me, The Rock takes the mic again. He says, The Rock will give you one more chance to change your mind. And Vince is getting pissed. Vince says, I'm warning you. You lay one hand on me. There will be. And Rock fucking punches him in the head. (laughs) So nothing happened. Rock punches him in the head. Nothing happens. He puts him in the fucking sharpshooter. Vince taps out. And Vince fucking gives Rock a shot. He agrees to it. He says, you get your title match tonight. And that's fun. So Rock, uh, it's really a word to your wise. uh, The wise, excuse me. You beat up your boss, you get whatever the fuck you want. Yeah, just Especially put him in the sharpshooter right now, and then that'll happen. You'll get what you want. Even if he tells you not to, just do it yeah. anyway. Uh, well, Vince gets back on the mic as Rock is leaving, and Vince says, Hey, Rock, yeah, you get your title match tonight, but you're going to get it in a steel cage. By the way, Rock leaves, and they play the Rock's music. Vince cuts this one-line promo, and then it changes to Vince's music. Yeah. Whoever gets the last word gets the fucking song. I never thought of that. I don't yeah, know if that's that, always how it is, but that's what, what happens so. here. Yeah, I think I think that's how it works. Uh, that's I, I looked up. I don't think there was a cage hanging there. I think they either build it or did it differently. They that, show it later. Yeah, they build it during the show. Yeah, because which thought, is very rare. Yeah, it's very rare. But I guess they wanted to, you know, no spoiler, make it feel spread. You know, yeah, yeah, sure. That's awesome. Yeah, yeah that's which great. Come pretty unnecessary though. They could have just put the cage up there and never shot it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Unless I mean, you know, I, I understand, but still. And then we move on to our first match of the night. It is Eddie Guerrero, Dean Malenko, and Perry Saturn taking on Test, Farouk, and Bradshaw, which this is an insane fucking matchup here. Test and the Acolytes are a team, whereas Eddie, Dean, and Perry with Terry, the by radicals. the way. Perry's got yeah, Terry. Perry and Terry, yes, yes. I don't know how that team, <laughs> I still don't understand how Perry or got well, Terry. Well, you see, there's Perry and you got your Terry. Of course, ah, that's yes, exactly how it works. alliteration, I get it. You know, yes. that's, uh, that's how a lot of fucking uh, teams get together, you know? Just uh, if you rhyme the names, it, it fucking works, you know? True, true. Uh, so uh, the Radicals come out first, Tess comes out, and then Eddie... Uh, gets on the mic and says, cut the music. And he says, hey, homie, you're missing something. You're missing the European Championship. Because Eddie beat him for yeah, it. Yeah, he said, Ese Vato, you're missing yeah. something. I love when he said, Ese Vato. Ese yeah. Vato, you know, Holmes, you missing the title? He says, you also happen to be missing something else. A couple friends, maybe. A couple guys to help you compete. Uh, and just to show you, Dan it, Dan it, oh Dan my. it. I got fucking chills. I said, oh, <laughs> fuck. <laughs> fucking APA is here. <laughs> so APA come out. Uh, Eddie... Uh, APA and Tess rush the ring. Eddie runs out of the ring as Dean and Perry get fucked up by the APA. Uh, and match is underway. This is a, you know, run the mill fucking match here. APA hit all the classics. They do a reverse 3D to Perry Saturn, which I was confused by, but I was like, okay, that's cool. Uh, Saturn gets in and fucks Tess up and hits the, as Heyman calls it, the moss covered three handled family <laughs> redundza. I did crack up with that. <laughs> uh, Tess hits a full Nelson slam on Saturn for two. Uh, and then goes for the uh, Terry goes uh, gets on the apron to distract uh, after that, but Test fucking brings her on the ring, goes the pump handle slammer. Uh, Saturn makes the save, and then Test big boots Saturn right in his fucking head. Dude, that Test, was uh, gnarly. Uh, that was Saturn like there. one of the best big boots I've ever seen in my life. That was awesome. It was awesome looking. Uh, then we go backstage. William Regal is in oh, his office. You, uh, before you get into Regal, did you hear oh, what sorry, Heyman yeah. had to say on this? No, what did he say? Funny. He's like, I would have just let Terry take the pump and slam and then get the win. <laughs> <laughs> and then come that's, back and beat him up. Yeah. That's pretty fucking good. Heyman's all, was, I don't, you know, I wonder how much, like, I, I don't know how much, because Vince was obviously on headsets. I wonder how much he actually was produced. Mm. I wonder because Vin, there was a lot of segments where Vince was just in the ring because Vince was on camera a lot. And Heyman and loved time, those. Yeah. I feel like, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. That's interesting. So we go backstage. Regal is in his office. He's still commissioner here. Regal says, uh, he's, I know Chris Jericho's a miserable troll. I know he's on the phone. He's talking to somebody. He says, I know Jericho's a miserable troll. Uh, Stephanie comes in and says, I just want to make sure I have your personal assurance that Trish will be unable to weasel her way out of the whipping match tonight. And Regal says, no way. 
says, uh, but are you sure you want to go through with this? And Stephanie starts attacking his desk with the strap. And she screams, she says, I want to make her squeal like a pig that she is. And Regal has a fucked up, crazy look on his face. And Stephanie just whips this table for a whole <laughs> minute, it feels like. Uh, and then we go uh, back to the ring. Heyman is looking at the WWF Ma- uh, Divas magazine and commentary. And Heyman says, I would like to personally volunteer to rub Sav on the loser of the whipping match. Personally. Me. Please. I would like to do that. <laughs> yes, uh, that is the... the uh... Jerry the King Lawler coming out of it. Yeah, um, that's right. That's uh, that's a good point. It feels like that was like a Lawler thing, but maybe, you know, I guess in 01, everyone was still fucking Everyone's perfect. horned up in 01, yeah, sure. Yeah. <laughs> and this is where they do the My Way recap. They uh, they recap all the uh, the title changes at the show, like the hardcore title, the European title, and I believe the tag titles, and of course, Austin um, winning the WWF title. Yes, they do the TLC uh, picture the recap two. with audio, yes. but it's pictures... But no. Yeah, it's like WWF magazine. Like it says, it's WWF magazine, but it's all just stills from the show. Like it's not like real pictures. Yeah, so it's a recap of that match. Which that match is like one of the craziest matches of all time, which is incredible. Yeah, yeah. So we go back from that. We go backstage again to Regal's office, and Vince is in Regal's office, and he asks Regal. He says, "I got some things to do when Austin gets here, and I don't want to have to worry about my little girl in this whipping match." You do know what to do. Regal says, I know exactly what to do. And Vince says, good. I'll go take some care of some other business. Did we really need that? Like, did we need to know that Regal's going to interfere? We couldn't have just, they could have just did that. Well, they had to foreshadow and let you know and blah, blah. Of course. The love, the foreshadow. They even fucking foreshadow Austin's turn at Mania. He's just staring at himself in the mirror. Yeah, they foreshadow Triple H too. There's all foreshadowing here. It's just, they love it. Tons of foreshadowing, yeah. Well, speaking of Triple H, Triple H is walking into the building and he's wearing 17 different jackets. He has a jean jacket, a leather jacket, a shirt under that, probably a vest under that. Dude, you can he's buy that. Sunglasses. Jean jacket, leather Dude, jacket. Dude, I saw that. Chalkline has chalk that, right? Line. Yeah, that's incredible. It's like expensive, how, how much though. is it? I feel I know, like it's how much like a couple it? hundred bucks. Let's see here. Fuck, let me look. Yeah. I better open here. Uh, is it on sale yet? It was? Yeah, I think it is. Let me see if I go. Let me see. Uh, I see. Oh, they're selling the Austin fucking jersey. They have a lot of Bret Hart stuff. The, uh, the... Oh, $200, wow. $200 is what it runs for. The Triple H, the game, denim entrance jacket. Damn. That is fucking expensive. It looks crazy, it, though, if you look at it here. I don't know if you're on it. Chocolate but... has such good fucking shit. It is expensive, man, but everything I bought from Chalkline, I and Chalkline, if you want to sponsor the show, please fucking do. Uh, everything I bought from Chalkline is fucking super good quality. And Dude, I, they, I have wear, like I, a, they have a jacket on here that literally looks like Bianca Belair's sequence entrance jacket. Like it's, that's looks crazy. like authentic to it, which is crazy. Dude, every time I'm, I'm around you now, I wear the Beavis and Butthead shorts. Yeah, dude. Yeah, those are Chalkline shorts. Yeah, all the freaking shorts they have are awesome they have like legit like dx jerseys with like suck it in the 69 yeah, on the I, back i think chocolate please sponsor our show i, I love your shit thank you <laughs> uh so triple h is walking into the building he's got all his bullshit on and michael cole comes up to him he says triple h can i get your thoughts on uh something that rarely occurs a loss by you to the undertaker which i i, I, I you're gonna have to tell him i never lose <laughs> <laughs> triple h says how many days are in a year uh, and Cole says 365. And Triple H says, well, 364 days this year I've been kicking everybody's ass. And one night I have a bad night. And I'm not taking anything from Taker. Uh, he showed the world he was the big dog. And I loved every second with every punch and every kick uh, and everything we did. I loved. Uh, uh, and uh, when we go again, the outcome won't be the same. And once all over Undertaker, we'll know that I'm the game. And he goes to leave. And Cole says, one more question. I want to get your thoughts on Stone Cold winning the WWF title with the help of your father-in-law. And this pisses Triple H off. He takes his bray off <laughs> for some reason. I don't know why. It it. Bray off uh, is serious. And Cole says, did you know anything about it? And Triple H says, what do you think? He walks away. Super foreshadowing. Yeah, super big foreshadowing. We'll, see, we'll get there later. Trish is walking through the hallway with her strap, of course. And Heyman says, the spanking match is up next. They call this like four different fucking names. It's a whipping match. It's a country whipping match. It's a spanking match. It's a ton of fucking shit. I think it was just a whipping match, but then he calls it a spanking match. I think good old JR calls it a country whipping match. A country whipping match is, of course. (laughs) Take him to the woodshed or whatever my daddy used to do. (laughs) Is that what he does? I don't know. I just make it up. I feel like he does. So we go backstage once again, and Stevie Richards is in his locker room? He's in that 70s room from the 70s show 
He's they, in a locker. Yeah, they're like bukkaking the camera guy. <laughs> no, it's, it's, it's that's a, you know when they do the pan on that oh, show when they're the, smoking the, pot. The high scene. Yes, that's what I oh. thought of here because they pan the camera over like they're all yes. gonna say something and they're smoking a blunt. You know the blunt yes, rotation yes, yes. scene. Yes, that's holy what it is. shit. That's what I this thought. This is the of. worst blunt rotation ever. Here. <laughs> Dal Venus, <laughs> Bull Buchanan, Bull Buchanan, fucking Stevie Richards. Uh, so Stevie Richards is here. There's a camera guy in the center of this Bukaki uh, passing scene here, uh, and it's like on, it's shooting him like Andre Cam, like they're shooting up at him. It's like uh, you know that video James did on his channel with the weird camera filter, and it was close up on the faces. Oh that's yes, what, that's what this camera was like. It, it was does like kind right of feel up like in that. Yeah, shit. you're right. Now this weird bright light on him. It was crazy looking, but well, Stevie says, "When we fall, we must get up and fight the good fight." And it pans around, showing the other right sensor members looking all uncomfortable. Uh, Stevie talks about them losing at Mania, and he says, "We do not lose our convictions, and tonight we will fight fire with fire and go after the one thing we despise the most." The hardcore title, and we will show Kane and the entire world just how deep our convictions run. And it gets a very close up fucking creepy shot of Stevie Richards face very strange looking dude they they uh they don't last very long after this right they're like done no it's soon, like right? they few like they fuck up like they like Kane kills them and then under like the brothers of destruction just fucking kill them off here So now it's time for the whipping match. It's Stephanie McMahon taking on Trish Stratus. Uh, they show a recap of what happened at Mania. During Vince versus Shane, Trish slapped Vince in the face. And then Stephanie slapped Trish and they fight. So here we go. Uh, Stephanie meets <laughs> Trish on the ramp and Luthes presses her on the fucking ramp. Breakout style WWE 2K. Yes, exactly. Uh, Trish slides in the ring and Steph stomps her out and then almost blows out her ankle. <laughs> trying to fucking stomp this is on be her. a catch his catch can wrestling match right here. I tell you about. Yeah, well, Stephanie's choking Trish with a strap. Oh, uh, she gets oh. up on the middle rope and fucking chokes her with it. Then she hits an even flow DDT. Even flow. Even right. flow, god damn it, yes. Uh, yeah, I bet that's <laughs> James what is that here was. to call me on it, so it's, it's even not flow. even Fuck. close, but go on. Fuck you, man. <laughs> yes, it is. Uh, Stephanie starts whipping Trish's ass. Heyman does the Jerry Lawler shit here where he says, oh, who, who's your mommy? I said, holy fuck, brother. Okay, <laughs> yeah, dude. come on, bro. Jesus. JR at one point calls Stephanie uh, Mish's game, which I was like, oh my God, that's so fucking weird. I feel like that's <laughs> Mrs. Game. I don't know, that's, that's not hilarious. fucking right. That's hilarious, Mrs. Game, all right. Yes, yeah, Mrs. Game. Stephanie grabs both of the straps and starts windmill whipping Trish, which was <laughs> crazy looking. Uh, Stephanie then climbs to the top rope, which I have no fucking idea what she possibly could have been going for here. I imagine she was going to invent the double 450 here. Oh, yeah. Sadly, we do not get that because Trish cuts her off. Stephanie's laying over the top rope and Trish is whipping her ass repeatedly. Uh, which leads to William Regal coming out. I can't fucking believe it. I never expected this to happen. He's going to do the right thing here, right? He's going to do the right he thing. He does the right thing and hits the most fucked up Regal cutter ever on Trish. <laughs> <laughs> she, like, bumps way too early on yeah, it and fucking yeah, yeah. dies. She holds Trish in a full... Uh, sorry, Regal holds Trish in a full Nelson. Stephanie's whipping her stomach, which leads to Chris Jericho coming out here to make the save. Jericho runs out, bumps Regal around, uh, throws him out of the ring. Stephanie is still whipping Trish on the outside, which leads to Jericho chasing her out and running up the ramp. He said something to her when he's on the apron, but I, I couldn't catch what it is. I feel like he calls her a whore or some shit. Yeah, probably. Apron. I'm sure. Something usual like that. Uh, but yeah, so the, really, the, so far, this Raw is just like continuing angles from Mania. Like, it's not like anything really new yet. And I don't know if we get anything new through the whole show. Because they're doing some, they're leading up to the next pay view, but I don't know where they go with this. But it's like, yeah, backlash is like just all rematches. It feels like, yeah. And then this match, I don't think it really. It just ends, right? They don't even have like a. I don't even know. No, what the, there's no. Sadly, Tony, the, there is no official I winner. The, I, don't, I don't know how you win. How do you win a country whooping match? It's not even like I, on a pole. They a strap a, match should have been on a pole kind of thing. But I guess it was just like pole. it was legal to use the strap, and you just pinfall. But no one ever went for a pin. No, I don't, so, yeah, no. I don't know. They show a graphic uh, for Austin versus Rock tonight in the steel cage with Austin in his Photoshop WWF title, which is so weird. Like, I they did this a lot back then. I don't know. I, I was it, it, it's, it's fucking hard to get wrestlers to take pictures, is the fucking problem here. Dude, you saw <laughs> WCW how they were doing it. Guys were in like t shirts and they just put like, WCW was fucked up. They with just the had pictures, like Kevin Nash in a t shirt and Booker T looking all good. I yeah, don't that even was. Know. They just. Yeah, that was fucking brutal. I don't know what man. they're doing over here. Yeah, it's crazy. 
So we go backstage. Stephanie is yelling at William Regal, asking him, how did he let Chris Jericho fucking get out there? And also, how did you lose to Chris Jericho at Mania? She was coming up with a bunch of fucking problems <laughs> with Regal up. here. Uh, she wasn't done with Trisha. And Regal says, I'll take care of it. Tonight, I'll put Jericho in a handicap match with me and... Uh, Olympic gold medalist Kurt Angle. <laughs> she's a good like, name to pull out of the ring. See, yeah, Olympic gold medalist Kurt Angle. Yeah, that's true. Uh, she said, like, "You see to it." And that so later night, we'll fucking handicap match. Great. I fucking hate handicap matches. Yeah, me too. Uh, and then we go to the ring. Crash Holly already in the ring. Who is the current light? I thought he was hardcore champion, but no, he's the light heavyweight champion. Kane's the hardcore champion, of Did course. Light just, heavyweight champion. They just said he's the light heavyweight, even though you want to be heavyweight. Or is it just? I see. Is, he, is he? Oh yeah, they would have they would have already done that, right? The Holly Angle, where is the heavyweight guy? Yeah, they, they definitely just, already have. That was like a big rib, right? Ah, oh, what if we give him the light heavyweight title? That'd be funny. <laughs> yeah. Well, so how long does the light heavyweight title last for? I feel like that title never gets a good run. Like I don't remember any good light heavyweight champions. Like, no. Uh, like Takamichi Noku, wasn't he light heavyweight champion or something? He was. He's I think a, he. Yeah. I want to say he won the. He was like the first champ. Like yeah, Taka Michinoku beats Brian Christopher to be the night in the ninety seven tournament, right? To become the first light heavyweight champion. That's right. Yeah. Okay. So here's the lineage: it's Taka, Christian, Gilberg, S. A. Rios, Dean Malenko, Scotty Tuhati, Dean Malenko, and then Crash Holly, Jerry Lynn, Jeff Hardy, X Pac, Tajiri. Oh wait, what? No, this can't be right. They changed it because to the yeah, it's got to change the cruiserweight, right? Uh, X Pac. Uh, X Pac is the last one. X Pac 2001 uh, SummerSlam is the last. Oh, X Pac is the reigning cruiserweight champion until losing the title to Billy Kidman on October 9th. X Pac was the final wrestler to hold the title. A title unification match at Survivor Series against WWE cruiserweight champion Tajiri was canceled because X Pac was injured. The championship was removed from television after X Pac's injury, but we continued to defend the title on house shows until it was officially retired on March 8th, 2002. Okay. Huh. Wow. Wow. Okay. I guess I remember Dean Malenko as the. Like I do champion. too. Yeah, I remember but that. I, don't I remember, remember him doing Taka. Anything. I don't remember Jerry Lynn having the fucking title. Crash beat Dean Malenko on Heat for the title. And Jerry Lynn beat Crash on Heat. It was the Heat title. I guess the Heat you know, title, yeah. You put that on Heat, make it a little workhorse title. It could be kind sure. of hot. That'd be kind of cool. I Jeff wanna... Hardy beat Jerry Lynn. I got to see that match. Dude, Jerry Lynn's WWF run was super short, right? Uh, it was only he debuts on April 29th, 2001, and he's released February 2002, so not even a year. He debuts on April 29th, 2001, yeah, on Heat. That's when he wins the title. What he wins oh, the title on April right. 29th, 2001, so he wins it on his debut. What? Is on that his true? debut on Heat, is that true? <laughs> Dude, yeah, I want to see that Jeff Hardy Jerry Lynn match now. That was on SmackDown. Yeah, we should never watch this. I want to see that. Uh, June yeah, 5th, okay. 2001, write that down because yeah, okay. uh, you write sounds, that down. <laughs> that's pretty interesting that uh, well there's a little uh, history of the uh, fucking light heavyweight title that's so, so Crash weird. Holly had title. it for a minute here April to March I, Lynn only or, has it for a month March to April I guess is when he has yeah, it okay. so there you go well Crash Holly's taking on Rhino here Crash challenged Rhino to this match by the way uh, WWF Raw is brought to you by Foot Locker Fram Oil Filters and Stacker 2 the world's strongest fat burner which Heyman says JR should try some uh, I get it I get it uh, all of a sudden, by the way, so it, it, it shows Crash in the ring, then it shows the sponsors, and then Rhino's in the ring all of a sudden. I didn't catch him making his entrance. I don't, because when they come back, right, it wasn't it Crash's music playing? I feel like I it was. I thought that was Crash's music. Was it yeah. not? I thought it was Crash's music, but maybe Maybe I'm it was wrong. Rhino's. I don't know, but Rhino was nowhere to be sounding. He no-clipped into the ring, and there he was. He, was <laughs> he does no-clip. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> At uh, Mania, I think Rhino gored Lita and Spike Dudley, I think, yes, in a TLC match. Yes, he came out match. in the TLC match. Uh, all the... Yeah valets or managers or whatever what you want to call it. What a fucking awesome out. match that was, though. Dude, Rhino just destroyed Lita, I think. That was awesome. On commentary, they say the Hardys aren't here, the Dudleys aren't here, and Engine Christian aren't here. The whole fucking show is not here. <laughs> I mean, that's pretty good to let them sell the injury, you know. Why not? Yeah. Well, there's not really much to this match. At one point, uh, really, the end of the match is Crash Holly hits a missile drop kick off the top. Rhino no-sells it, stands up, and gores Crash Holly to fucking oblivion. Dude, he and beats destroys him. him. That was awesome, man. That gore. Yeah, it was awesome. Dude, they protected the gore so good back then. It looked real good at this time. Listen, if you've listened to Deadlock enough, you're, you've heard this from me before. I don't fucking understand how Rhino didn't get a booger push. I just have no fucking idea, man. Rhino was awesome. He looked fucking great. His finish was over. He was believable. Like, uh, what the fuck? He was... Because he wasn't six foot? Is that they what it was? They should have let Rhino just do the pile driver off the thing through the table. Holy the, shit! <laughs> to Molly Holly or something. 
Dude. Do it off the backlash set. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, with the little swinging thing. Holy shit. That oh, my swing and gore. Dude, how the games never let you swing on the fucking bash like a backlash hooks? I don't know. That would have been incredible. That would have been awesome. On Here that Comes the Pain great. or something. Wow. Well, uh, speaking of shit Rhino does, Molly Holly, after the match, is on the top rope and hits Rhino with the Molly go round. Which Rhino fucking no sells, gets up and gores Molly Holly in fucking oblivion. <laughs> Dude, holy shit. Let me explain the Molly go round for anybody that doesn't understand. Which, it, by the way, this move is cool fucking move. sweet. I don't think anyone it cool. does it anymore. I don't really know anyone that does um, this move. Maybe no, I people do so. it. I, like on a main television stage, I don't know who does it. So she sure. does a front flip, uh, Bray Mysterio style, legs around the face, you fall back. And that move looks yeah. crazy. It Rhino is. Rhino cool. no sells it. Fucking. Destroys her. her. So good. Yeah. So good. She dies. Which really was Molly's fault. I mean, she, you know, she'd have to fucking get involved. I mean, she here. gave her best move. The Molly Ground is sick. She, she awesome. could have just nodded at the Molly Ground and not got gored. I don't know, man. She's got to protect her man, Crash. Her man? <laughs> it's a nope. cousin. Family. Whatever. <laughs> They're not really related. It's not the dumps. <laughs> <laughs> well, we go backstage and Kevin Kelly is interviewing Deborah, asking her what she thought of Vince and Austin joining together at uh, WrestleMania. And Deborah says she was just okay. Listen to this. Deborah says she was just as surprised as everyone else. Then Kevin Kelly asks if she knew anything about it beforehand, and she says she can't talk about that right now. You can't have it both fucking ways. You either knew or you didn't know. You can't be surprised and then fucking know. Uh, she didn't know, but she was surprised. She was surprised and she knew. And she's she a liar, is what I'm she surprised. is, Tony. She's gonna she's go a make some cookies, liar. and it's gonna be the cookies. best thing ever. <laughs> Get some cookies. Right. Stab yeah, her right. with the cookies. Uh, they do a screenshot recap of Vincent Austin shaking hands at Mania, and JR says, I think uh, Austin has a, a lot of damn explaining to do. Which, I guess we're going to get a little explanation here, because it is time for Stone Cold's, uh, what was it, uh, inauguration here of the WWF Championship? Yeah, he's going to hand over the title, even though he had the title yes. after the show. He did Mania. have the title after the show. But, but th that's a cool little thing they did. I always liked when, like, because Vince done this a couple times. Vince has done this. He did it with The Rock, I, I think. He did do it with Rock. I feel like he did it with, like, Kane too. He likes to put in when a. He should have put in a glass little case like he always did. That was cool, dude. The glass to, case is awesome. I that love was just that. for Austin to jump the barricade or drive a vehicle in and beat the shit out of him. So for some reason, and maybe I'm wrong. I thought WWE Shop sold those cases, which is cool. We should get those because I are think at one cool point they did, but I don't know if they. Yeah, still I don't know do. if they still do. Uh, yeah, that was crazy. I though. imagine those are a fucking bitch to ship, but yeah, those are cool as fuck. I like those a lot. So Vince comes out with the WWF title. Vince says, in a moment, the official presentation of the WWF Championship belt, and he, and he couldn't be, uh, he couldn't help but detect early on a few boo boos when uh, Stone Cold's name was mentioned. And quite frankly, he doesn't appreciate it, and sometimes, uh, but sometimes it doesn't matter what I really appreciate. I am perplexed, though, because at WrestleMania, when Austin won the title, you all cheered. So I don't understand why you would continue to cheer and support Stone Cold after all he's done for you. Uh, why you wouldn't continue to cheer, excuse me. Which is true. They fucking still boot the rock after that. Are fickle. Yeah. Well, you they're in fucking they're Texas. Sick. I don't know what they're expecting here. Yeah, do a Texas heel turn. That'll go over great. Let's do that with Stone Cold. So Vince fucking rambles on forever here, talking about everyone. Uh, he says, Austin didn't do anything that any of you don't do on a daily basis, which is kiss your boss's ass. Boo. He says, yes, you do. Yes, you do. <laughs> so don't blame Stone Cold for doing what each and every one of you do every day, for doing what I do to become WWF champion. Then Vince introduces Stone Cold, and Austin comes out with a fucking Disturb song, which I... God damn, I love this song. Dude, such a good song. Such a good it's song. It's tremendous. And uh, Austin comes out and Heyman says, say something. Talk, damn it. And he's talking to JR. And Heyman then goes on a fucking big spiel. He says, quit being a damn crybaby. You want him to win the title. He broke his neck. He had spinal surgery. He wanted the title. Well, he got it. Why don't you be happy for your friend? And JR says, why don't you kiss my ass? <laughs> That's so oh, fucking that's good. So good, yes. I was, so, I was like, "Why?" Well, that's he stops talking after. Why don't you kiss my ass? He just keeps. That's it. It shuts Heyman up. Yeah, fuck, dude. Austin's out here with no knee pads, by the way, which is real cursed as fuck. Knee braces or pads? No knee, no knee braces, no knee pads, no nothing. He's got nothing. Just Bare shorts. knees. Just shorts. No, his Whoa. knees were still functionable at this point. I think maybe, that maybe is not. Fucking weird as hell. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, that was cursed. Well, Vince uh, gives the title to Austin. Austin takes the belt, snatches it from him. Oh, no. He takes the belt, poses in the corner with it. Then he takes the mic from Vince. And Vince looks afraid because he snatched it out of his hand. And Austin says, now that I got what I wanted from WrestleMania. 
And now I got Vince McMahon in this ring by myself. If you want me to whip this some bitch's ass, give me a hell yeah. The crowd goes, hell yeah. They're like, oh, fuck, he's just going to turn right back. He's out like, I heard you. Give me a hell yeah. They give me a hell yeah. Austin looks and he says, well, it ain't going to happen tonight. Oh, Ooh. damn it, dude. If you would have done that, that would have been incredible. Turn just, right back? I wonder really? how that would have went over. It probably like, would have been great. Oh, fuck, it probably never mind. Awesome. We'll just yeah. fucking... Because it probably would have saved a lot of business. Yeah, I, dude, that would have been crazy. Well, Austin says, uh, like, I'm supposed to grant every single little wish. I'm supposed to let you people feed off of me, sponge off of me, like a bunch of parasites. And you know what? I look out here, and you people are just the same people at the airports, and the little people at home is watching their cuddle little TVs. Thinking, why Stone Cold, why? <laughs> Dude, that, if you ever watch, like, recaps of, like, this whole turn and everything, you'll all, yeah. you'll hear Austin say, why Stone Cold, why, why? I think on the SmackDown episode, why yeah. Stone Cold, why? Oh, yeah, you're right, you're why? right. Dude, it's, it's also funny, crazy and hilarious that Stone Cold calls it a colored TV. <laughs> Dude, I was just about to say, <laughs> you little people at home watching your little colored TV. What the, f 2001? <laughs> Dude, what do you think? Stone Cold's got a black and white CRT in his house? Dude, they got Austin out here cut a you people promo. Come on, you man. You people. Yeah, Don't you're cut right. The you people promo. Well, you know what? I sit there and I say, how about a big explanation and a real slow one for those here in Texas? But the way. Shut up, you little bastard. And such <laughs> you the guy in the crowd. <laughs> I'll let everyone out here know that I can. I'll let everyone out here know that I can whip everybody in that stand's ass. Anyway. I don't owe you no explanation. <laughs> so, what the fuck? Since you want to chant Rocky, Rocky, <laughs> I got something to say about that too. Rock, you come out here like you're some kind of big shot tough guy, and you put Mr. McMahon in a sharpshooter. Uh -uh. That oh, you missed, you missed out to the great line that oh, Austin always says. Which one? He says, Sorry. you little mealy mouth bastard. He, he always, oh, around no, this time, oh, he used yes, to say mealy right. mouth bastard. You little mealy you're mouth right. bastard. You want to be Mealy mouth man? bastard. <laughs> that was like his heel line. You're right. Uh, uh, that's something you just don't do. So tonight, Rock, when they drop that steel cage, don't figure on Stone Cold <laughs> being champion for 24 hours. You can walk your carcass out here, raise your eyebrow as many times as you want. Stone Cold's going to bounce your candy ass around that cage. But don't figure Stone Cold ain't going to be champion. You keep saying fi figure, Stone Cold. It's fucking figure. figure. Don't figure. <laughs> don't finger Stone Cold. Don't you do it. <laughs> but basically, that's all I got to say about that. And that's it. And Vince says, and that's the bottom line. Cause don't oh, cause cause Mr. McMahon says so. I, I I originally think that was like this is our line. That's all I got to say about that. And then McMahon would close it with that's the bottom line. That was like their heel thing that I think they were gonna. That was do. the yeah. That was their big evil thing. It does feel so fucking weird though. I mean, like even this far out, like Vince and Austin feuding is like that's like wrestling to me. It's, yeah. Oh my I god. I still like. I was like, man, what if you? That's the biggest what if in wrestling is what if Stone Cold yeah. would have just turned his back right back on. Vince there and it's crazy like it's it's one of those things it's like you know like uh like people like stuff that didn't happen like did Austin and Vince have to fucking team up no mm. am I glad that I saw it happen I kind of am just because it's something like I you know it's a, it, that would have been a what if like oh what if Austin and Vince teamed up together okay well we know what happened it didn't fucking go well for the business but there was some entertaining shit from it when they get into the whole thick of it with Kurt Angle and the funny comic stuff I oh mean my that God. was really good that was like but turning like Stone Cold going from like the biggest ass kicker world beater in the world to like Vince's bitch is like, oh my god, that Especially, is so fucking like, weird. In hindsight, when you're the only wrestling company and you're like killing your top baby face of all oh time. Oh my god, and Rock's leaving? Rock's leaving, and then like most, like Taker and Kane were doing a tag thing, I think, right? Don't they do Brothers of Destruction? That's right, at Brothers this time? of Destruction. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And you, yeah. And then, you know, later and with Triple H. Triple H is going out of his way to make sure Jericho is not a top guy. <laughs> yeah, so it's like, who is on top? Like, Angle's. Soon gonna be there. I mean, they had to do Trip, the invasion I mean, yeah, stuff. Yeah, and Triple H is obviously. Up. I mean, spoilers. Triple H is still fucking heel at the end of this. Yeah, they got they got to do the invasion stuff. But there's like, literally after this, there's like no challengers for Stone Cold Steve Austin, really. No, no, there's not. There's yeah. not, and that you know, like they, it's it's, it's RVD very fucking weird. or whatever. Whenever they get there, I don't well, know. Well, they that that's, that's a one off. That's yeah. a one off. Yeah. So I don't even know. 
the uh, Vince's music hits and uh, him and Austin uh, leave. They show Triple H on the monitor backstage. He's not happy. And they also show Rock on a monitor backstage as well, just in a much smaller locker room, which is seemingly in a basement. <laughs> <laughs> Up next, we got Val Venus versus Kane for the hardcore title. Of course, RTC trying to win the hardcore title to get rid of it, I guess. Yeah, they're going to take the one thing they hate the most is hardcore wrestling, I guess, and get rid sure. of it. Which, by the way, they should have all just jumped in, destroyed right away. It doesn't make fucking sense. It's hardcore. Right. Change. They should have all just, just maybe they they have morals, right? I guess the RTC, I, I, I don't you know. You know what? That's fair. Maybe they are, but they, they you know, pile driving China, they weren't really morally right. Yeah, just I don't bad, know. You know? Like, yeah. <laughs> uh, well, uh, Stevie Richards and Valvin has come out. They both have trash cans. Heyman's on commentary saying, uh, I, 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 I bet you wish they censored Steve Austin. And Jared says, why don't you shut up about Austin? <laughs> <laughs> and Hay- Heyman says, you're always like, mwah, mwah, I love Steve Austin. Mwah, mwah. And Jared says, we are owed an explanation by God, by somebody for something. And, uh, you- <laughs> and <laughs> Kane's coming out and JR is still fucking pissed. Kane comes out and Jared says, and, and you know what? You better learn to step off, Jack, or you're going to be back in the bingo hall. <laughs> That's holy shit. <laughs> Uh, Kane gets in the ring and Valvinus immediately fucking brains him in the head with a trash can. They, man, no Dudleys, no Edge and Christian, no Hardys, Triple H isn't working, uh, Undertaker's not working, uh, they give this match too much fucking time. Dude, this match felt forever. It felt way longer than it was, I feel like. It, was, it felt the like it was The only like reason it didn't long. get my deadlock plus 10 of the night is because it was a hardcore match, and I was hoping they did some cool spots. But they don't! They, do they not. don't! Dude, no. and not even, like... I don't know how much you want to recap this match, but I Kane, got some shit, but yeah. Kane doesn't even win by his, like, finishing move. No! He, he, he puts with his... fucking... He wins with the Kane clothesline off the top! <laughs> That's how much they don't care. Also, it's Val Venus, by the way. Did we mention it's Val Venus? So <laughs> yeah, fuck this Val from Venus. the start. For the hardcore <laughs> yeah. title, Val Venus is here. Yeah. Put Stevie in there at least or some. Come on, fucking bro. Fucking hell, man. Yeah. Holy. I mean, they do they do some stuff. Like, it's really just hitting each other in the head with trash can lids and stuff. Yeah. Stevie gets obliterated with a fucking big boot. They're branding each other with trash cans and trash can lids. Kane hits all the sidewalk slams and they just do all the like Val Venus does DDTs. no moves. I don't think he does the even flow and that's it. That's the only move he fucking does. Yeah. And I, I even wrote down. I was like, I was trying to figure out why they gave this so much time, but Deb was like, yeah, the half the fucking show's not here. I'm like, oh my god, you're right. Kane goes up top. Kane clothesline. Kane wins. I said, what the fuck? That was so fucking weird. I like thought I missed something because I like looked over and I was like, that yeah, it? you that's bl- that's what happened. Yeah, that's the win. Okay. All right. Uh, here, here come the good father and Bull Buchanan to fucking save the day. They come out. RTC is stomping Kane out in the corner. Then Undertaker in bandana, uh, vest, and leather pants jogs down to the ring to make the save. Uh, they choke slam Val uh, Venus, and then they both choke slam Good Father and Bull Buchanan at the same time to really drive home the point that the right to censor are fucking dead soon. Fuck! And then they're teaming up Kane and Taker again so that they can have some tag team to go against. Stone Cold later and a bunch of shit like come on yeah I mean it's pretty much just the invasion team that they're building for here yeah yeah they set it up like fuck dude uh, man like it's like now Wrestlemania at the, the Raw after Wrestlemania they always have like debuts and like crazy shit yes they did not have yeah. the hindsight back then to like maybe you know some of those WCW guys we should bring in like tonight as like WWF guys or do some right, surprise there's nothing or something like, yeah there's I mean there's there's build here but there's nothing that's like you need to watch next week. The only thing that there's reason to watch next week is because there's nothing else on WCW's dead. Yeah, I mean they build like the, after the main and the you know the swerve at the sure, end of the night. Sure, yeah, but, the, the turn. But yeah. they don't have any like uh, it's like it's like uh, normal programming. You know, day to day WWF. How do we sure. get to the next show? How do we get to the next pay per view? It's yeah. not like oh, this is a big, this is like a milestone moment where like okay, WCW's over. We have to like make something crazy like yeah we have a fucking crazy thing right now where we can shift all of wcw's viewers which it wouldn't happen anyway but they no but they like, could have done if they would immediately try to get some shit on there to get w like anything wcw other than what happens on the show with wcw which is very little like you know they could have did something like you know that you have like one chance to make a good first impression for like spend some money and get booker t out here now exactly bro yeah man doing? get ddp out here get somebody man you got all yeah, these guys just sitting around hell. doing nothing well, we go backstage again, and Triple H is uh, walking backstage, and he runs up to Regal. And he's like, where's Vince? Uh, 
And Regal says, I can't fucking tell you. And he says, where's Vince? And he says, you mean Mr. McMahon? And he says, no, I mean Vince, my father-in-law. <laughs> I said, Holy <laughs> shit, you look like a jabroni here, man. Well, Regal says, I don't like the tone of your voice, sunshine, so you better calm it down a bit. And Triple H says, I don't care what you think, you limey piece of crap. I said, holy <laughs> shit, Jesus. <laughs> He said, if I find out you knew anything about this, I'll kick your ass. Now, where's Vince? And he says he's in catering. So we go uh, to catering, and Vince is getting some coffee in catering. And Triple H walks up to him and he says, you and I need to talk you. You keeping me in the dark on stuff? And Vince says, easy. And Triple H slaps the fucking coffee out of his hands into the sky and says, don't tell me easy. Don't tell me easy. You're going to keep me in the dark on things, huh? You want to let me... Not know what's going on with stuff like this. <laughs> Dude, he's, he like stutters. I don't Jesus. know what he says. <laughs> You're gonna let me not know what's going on around here. <laughs> yeah. Dude, it's exactly like the Zandig yeah, promo. You're like just a Zandig here. He's saying, Jesus. You're gonna. Yeah. You're gonna not let me. There's two of them. <laughs> You're gonna not let me Stone know what's cold. going on around here. <laughs> Me and, me and Austin just went to hell and back, uh, yeah. fought each other, beat each other's asses for a year, and you're not, you're gonna let me not know, leave me, Jesus! Ah! <laughs> After the coffee goes flying like a hundred miles an hour out of his hand. Right to censor! I thought right to censor was dead! <laughs> Fuck, bro, this Triple H. He just got real fired up, like he didn't know what to say, so he just starts yelling. He super flustered, yeah. <laughs> yeah you wanna let me know? Not what's going on, but stuff like <laughs> <"Yeah, yeah." laughs> Fuck, bro. Well, Vince says I didn't tell you because at the time I didn't think there was any of your business. And Stone Cold asked me for my help, and you didn't. All right, Stone Cold was a winner, and you weren't. And Vince walks off, and Triple H and smashes a bunch of what salt and pepper packets or some bullshit. Yeah, <laughs> they're gonna keep telling him that he sucks and he's a loser, but whatever. Well, you know, it's uh, foreshadowing, foreshadowing, ah, foreshadowing. Yes. Ah, yes. You, yeah. Jesus. <laughs> uh, then we move on to a handicap match. Chris Jericho taking on William Regal and Kurt Angle. Of course, Castrol GTX presents Backlash. What is the Backlash card? Do we have that here? Uh, yes, yeah, the uh, tag match. I think it's Taker and Kane versus Austin Triple. Or uh, well, Vance. all right, here we go. Uh, Backlash is Jerry Lynn beats Crash Holly in the uh, dark match to retain the... Uh, oh, no, to win the... Wait, what? The heat. Oh, that's a heat match. That's the heat. So he, does he, be, he debuts oh. here, and then he wins the thing. He debuts yeah. there. Wow, okay. Lita beats Molly Holly on heat. X-Factor beat the Dudleys. Rhino beats Raven for the hardcore title, or to retain it. Uh, Regal beats Jericho in a Duchess of Queensbury rules match. The ultimate submission thing, right? Whatever. That, Jericho. Oh, no, that's a different uh, one. That's, a different that's one. Benoit and Angle. That's the next one, yeah. Okay. Benoit and Angle, 30-minute ultimate submission match, uh, which went four to three in overtime. Which was in a video game. What game was that? Uh, it's in a couple of them. It's in the SVRs for sure. Yeah, that's how I remember. Um, Shane McMahon beat the Big Show in a last man standing match. Matt Hardy beat Christian and Eddie Guerrero to win the European title. Uh, and then the main event, uh, which, uh, spoilers, Stone Cold and Triple H become a team here. A two-man power trip of Stone Cold and Triple H beat Kane and Taker to win the tag titles. Wow. Crazy. They and the uh... Intercontinental, all the titles were on a line now. I think the, uh, if Kane and Taker won, they would have won the IC and WWF title. Okay. Wow. Yeah, which is, wow. I don't know who, I guess they who would have, Kane uh, surely would have been WWF champion, right? <laughs> Wait, how did Kane and Taker just win the tag titles? Because didn't they, didn't they just do TLC and then that thing happened and now they just, they're just tag champs now? The whole like uh, TLC match that was like the greatest match of all time. They just move oh, on from that. Oh, fuck. They You're just, right. They just, they just, they need to put the belts on Kane and Taker. Oh, yeah. They, when do they win these back here? What I the guess, fuck? you know what? Not, I guess if, uh, you know, the teams were so beat up after the TLC match, they could uh, lose the belts. We, or let's see. They. Brothers are just, so Edge and Christian win them on April first. Taker and Kane win them April seventeenth. Wow. So yeah, not didn't uh, we had a shift? Sorry, we had to get. They, I guess uh, they couldn't just have Austin and Triple H beat Edge and Christian. It wasn't a big enough match, so they did that. But then they put Christian in that three way match in the European title at Backlash. Right. So yeah, and Edge isn't on that card. Does Edge get hurt? Uh, maybe because maybe that's Edge's injury. Then that's he makes a the... return or whatever, and he comes yeah, back maybe in my Durango right. style. Sure. But I yeah, feel like that's right. Maybe they were all beaten up. The Dudleys seem like they were the only Probably. team that stayed around, right? Dudleys yeah, were... yeah, they're yeah, that's right. Yeah. Wow. Okay. Interesting stuff. Wow. Yeah. Uh, you can still see chop like marks on Regal's chest from his match with Jericho <laughs> at Mania, which is nuts. They chopped that that's hard. Insane. 
man, I really want to take this time here to talk about how much I don't like watching handicap matches. No, they're not. They're so boring. They're yeah. so boring. Uh, if anyone can point me to some good handicap matches, because I'm sure there have been some good ones, but like, man, these matches fucking suck. They just, it's just like uh, whatever. Who, I, you know what I mean? Like, it's, it's there. There's not really much to it. I, I'd rather just watch singles match, tag match, handicap matches. I understand why they're there. They're just fucking boring. Uh, the greatest handicap match was Scott Hall and Kevin Ashford, Randy Savage, Sting, and Lex Luger. Bash the Beast style, I guess that's a uh, handicap oh, match. Oh, okay. I, well, I, I, Hostile takeover. Uh, Chris Jericho versus night. Roddy Piper versus Ricky Steamboat versus Jimmy Snuka. Was that a handicap match or was that a gauntlet? <laughs> I don't know. They, this is just a list of the best okay. handicap matches. Uh, Rock Dude, is who Stone Cold. a list of this? Wow. Okay. Bleacher Report. Uh, okay. The Rock is Stone Cold ones? versus the NWO. Uh, that was like a SmackDown, I think, or something. But uh, in my mind, what what makes these great? Because in my mind, I can already see these all going the exact same way, where it's heat, 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 and then the comeback. Rock and Sock versus Evolution, I guess that was a good one. Uh, oh, that was a good one. I like that one. Randy Orton versus Cody Rhodes and Ted DiBiase. I don't remember that one. So, but I do remember Rock and Sock and Evolution. That might be the best I do one too. of all That's time. That was a mini match. Yeah, that yeah. might be the best one. So there you go. All right, I'll take that. So uh, Jericho is just trying to fight with them. He does a triangle dropkick to Regal to bump him off the apron. Just a lot of bumping and tagging in and out. Regal gets into the ring at one point. Oh, there was actually a pretty cool reversal here. Kurt goes for a German on Jericho. Jericho cuts him off by like hooking his legs around the back of Kurt's legs and then rolling through, uh, which led to Jericho putting uh, Kurt in the walls. And then Regal gets in the ring and kicks Jericho like right in the fucking throat. It was <laughs> fucking brutal. Uh, Regal hits a double underhook suplex off the top to Jericho, which was awesome. Jericho eventually hits the ropes, which leads to Kurt smashing him in the back with a chair from the floor, which referee doesn't see. And Regal hits the Regal cutter to get the win. Dude, Shocking. the Regal cutter is kind of fucked up. He did it earlier, and now he's doing it here. It's kind of a fuck. Like I, it's, I, I no like one the move. That has I love that move. I but love the way that he move. does. He almost does like running kind of, which is kind of weird. It, yeah, like he wraps your arm and runs and yeah, it's like falls. a close, like you close on yourself or something almost. But cool fucking uh, move, still a cool movie. I was expecting the regal stretch, but we don't see the regal stretch here. I don't no, think. no regal stretch here. But they do, uh, they do fucking stomp Jericho out here. Uh, Heyman says, "Hey, how about how's that? That's how you break the walls down." I said, "Oh, says shit, it okay. multiple times. It must have been yeah, one of those, that's how like, you break the walls down, Jericho." Oh, really? Regal just broke the walls down. Vince must be fucking shouting at him. Uh, Kurt puts Jericho in the ankle lock and Crispin Wah. Comes out to make the save here. Uh, they, he bumps everybody out, and Jericho and Benoit then stare at each other for an uncomfortable amount of fucking time. Well, you see here, he doesn't like Jericho. They're foes, yes. but he doesn't like Angle. But why is the stare down for so fucking long? Like, he, I, I've, I felt like there was supposed to be a replay in there, and then eventually they do do a replay, and then they're still staring each other down after. I don't know. They're explaining on a commentary. He hates Angle, but he doesn't like Jericho. I don't know. Sure. He's not here to Fair enough. his team or whatever. I don't know. Yeah. Whatever. A limo arrived earlier tonight at new WWF York, uh, and it's Shane McMahon with a big fucking shiner. His eye is fucked up. What did Dude, he get I, hit with at the pay-per-view? I don't know. Vince's fist, maybe. I still, Vince, <laughs> Vince throwing fist. Got to give you that shiner. There's a lot of trash, work. There's trash cans and stuff in there, too. I don't know. Maybe it was In the limo? Oh, no, in the match. <laughs> yes. <laughs> At the match of mania. I don't uh, know. Right. I'm assuming Vince just threw a right and fucked him up. That's Probably, what yeah. Happened. Well, the WWF Slam of the Week is brought to you by Castro GTX, which is Edge doing the big fucking spear off the ladder to Jeff Hardy at Mania. Craziest, still one of the craziest spots of all time. Now, correct me if I'm wrong. I don't know if you'll know this. Maybe somebody else can correct me. I swear they did that spot before Mania. Just the Mania one is cooler looking. But mm. I swear they did it in the No Mercy match. They might have. I don't recall, but you might be correct. Someone can tell me otherwise. I don't know why. I might be making that up. Maybe I tried it in a fucking video game or something. But for some reason, I feel like they did it before this. And I remember seeing it and being like, holy fucking shit. Why did this not get as much attention? Yeah, you might be right. It might have. I don't know. It felt like for some reason, it felt like that title belt and the tag match was way higher than it usually is. I don't know. Maybe it was. Maybe it wasn't. Like I but... thought that they did it in the one where they get the Jeff Hardy animation uh, right, for yeah, the, the, the No Mercy thing. The tit, the tit one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, maybe someone can connect, or we'll watch it back, but I, I swear they did it before they that. They might maybe have I'm done it, yeah. Crazy. I mean, all-timer fucking spot. That, uh, unreal. Unreal. And, like, it's it just so, like, the gigantic crowd, and, like, you see all the fucking, uh, the flashes from the cameras the going off. The way it happened when he does in it. the cell, too, the way the Ed sells it and everything. Oh, like it's he unbelievable. sits up like yeah. he's dead, too, so it's crazy. Super, super fucking cool. Um, and now we move on to, this is so fucking 
I mean, they explain it, but I'm like, holy shit. The one Billy Gunn versus X Factor's X Pac. Yeah. Yeah, this is fucked up. On SmackDown, Billy Gunn and Shane were talking to each other. Oh my, very controversial. We and did Heyman- see this. We did. We, uh, we, wa- I think we watched the SmackDown. Because did we? We watched something. In- it was either SmackDown or Raw or something because I remember like I remember the Shane, Hardys talking to him. Yeah, Shane talked to various wrestlers. Okay, I, sure, I, maybe you're I, right. I don't know why Billy got singled out here, but okay. You know what? Maybe it was because maybe we did the Go Home to Mania 17. Yeah, I think we might have, but it, yeah, it, why Billy got singled out? I, I don't know. Well, yeah. So Billy and Shane were talking to each other. Uh, Heyman says, "Ah, oh, Shane, uh, obviously trying to recruit people to work for the other thing company." Uh, and this match was booked by Vince because of that. Which, in my mind, I feel like Vince should be begging Shane to take Billy Gunn. Take him. <laughs> take him to WCW. Yeah, he was the Please. one at this point. Take he the was, fucking one out of here. Get the, the fuck one. out of here. They, we love the one Billy Gunn. He, well, here awesome. comes fucking X-Pac with just incredible and Albert, two bald bastards. Yo, you're Albert's dealing outside with the, the X-Factor. Ring. That's not even a song here. Well, it's dubbed. Was it, cause is it dubbed? They're not paying for... You think they're paying for Uncle Cracker to well, be I just on there? Did, I didn't know if this was like OG, OG X Factor that didn't use that yet. I no, wasn't they, sure. They, they used it. They just okay. didn't... Uh, they ain't paying for You're Uncle Cracker. with the X Factor. <laughs> is Uncle Cracker still rocking? Are they still cracking? I don't know, dude. We still no cracking? Let's see. What was his last fucking... His name is Matthew. I don't want to know that. I got I everything I, I ever wanted. 2012 was his last album. Everywhere. What does Uncle Cracker do now? He's touring across two countries and has 31 upcoming concerts. What the fuck? Really? <laughs> That's what it said. Oh, he got shit. tour dates in 2023. Wow. He's That's, on Warped you, Tour. You, you Google <laughs> Uncle Cracker and the first thing that comes up is, what does Uncle Cracker do now? <laughs> okay, fair enough. <laughs> That's a great sign. Uh, so they do a bunch of bullshit in this match. Xbox sets Billy up for the Bronco and actually does hit it, which is a reverse stink face, of course, right, Tony? Sure, yes, of course. Uh, Billy bumps Justin Credible on the apron as, uh, Justin Credible gets on the apron. Billy bumps him. Ref is distracted by Justin Credible on the apron selling. Billy hits the X Factor on, uh, sorry, Billy hits a Famouser on X-Pac, which leads to Albert coming in and hitting the Baldo bomb. Uh, and X-Pac gets the win because of this. And then, uh, they run a fucking train on Billy Gunn. Albert hits a running splash. And then Credible and X-Pac hit the double super kick. Let's Young go. Yeah. Dude, I feel like I've seen X-Pac and Billy Gunn have, like, a million matches throughout the Attitude Era, like, with the DX feud and all that. You're right. I feel like yeah, yeah, you're right. I feel like this is just, like, on repeat. They could probably pull out a match anytime. Them too. After the match, Heyman says, and the message has been sent. Uh, no one gives a fuck that Billy Gunn wants to go to WCW. No one cares. Dude, he was going to be their promise. top guy. He was going to be the top WCW recruit. Uh, the Brock, girl, girl. RVD, and uh, No, Billy not Gunn. that WCW. That's Eric Bischoff's <laughs> WCW. I'm oh, talking okay, about Shane McMahon's WCW. Sorry, sorry, sorry. It's enough. Billy Gunn and only Billy Gunn because they haven't recruited anyone else yet. That's true. Uh, well, they show uh, Shane at WWE of New York signing a bunch of shit. He's high fiving fans earlier. Uh, this is earlier tonight, leading, uh, the, you know, ad- hyping up that Shane is going to talk from WWE of New York tonight. Sure, can't wait. And we go back to the arena, and they, as we talked about earlier at the top here, they show shots of them setting up the cage, which I thought was super fucking cool because I think that rarely happens. Like you said, Tony, like it's usually just hanging above the, the building. Yeah, anytime, like. I've been to like live events or like uh you know raw or something. I see the, they don't announce the cage, but you see it up there. Like, oh, what's gonna happen? What's going yeah, on tonight? Yeah, right. But they kept yeah. us in the dark years, which is kind of cool. And their cage was in two parts, Tony. Ours was in three. I don't know how they build a cage so fast there in WWE. I don't fucking WF. understand. Yeah, I don't get it. Ours, they, I mean, ours didn't. I feel like they got ours up pretty fucking quick for no, what they, I thought uh, it was gonna be. They did pretty fucking well because we yeah, had a they, lot of people too. They had a good uh, system there, so they built it all and then they took it apart in different sections, which made it like yeah. a lot faster, which is kind of cool. Yeah. Shouts out to the uh, DPW crew. Um, but yeah, I just thought, you know, seeing them, I, I always like that stuff. Like, I always like, uh, yeah, CZW used to do this, which was cool. They would um they would keep hard cam on for the building of the Cage of Death, and then they would do like a, a like a, I don't know, like sped up version of it showing it being built. Oh, yeah. Which I always like thought was time cool. Time lapsing, that's pretty yeah. cool. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I always like the- Time uh, lapse, that's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I like the cage dropping with the doom, 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 Oh, the cage music is fucking on- That was You awesome. can't fucking touch the cage music. Yeah, that's yeah, fucking unbelievable. Dude, yeah. getting ready for this crazy match about to happen. So they show a screenshot recap of the Shane Vince match from WrestleMania, and then we go live inside WWF New York with Shane McMahon. Dude, I uh, okay. By the way, they do this uh, the recap of the match, the Shane Vince thing. They're doing commentary on the match. Jr. is putting over the uh, what's Van Daminator, Van Terminator? What's it called? 
Van, coast da- to coast. Uh, Van Terminator, right? Van, Van Terminator. Coast That's to coast. right, Tony. You're right. The Van Terminator. They're putting this over as Jr. is saying this is the greatest movie he's ever seen in his entire life with Paul Heyman fucking. sitting right next to him. Yeah, I know. <laughs> like, I you know. Fucking stole that from Rob Van Dam. You know Heyman Dude, was pissed. That piss. That pisses me off. <laughs> Just, it's called fucking, the Coast to Coast. Yeah. Oh, I can't stand that shit, man. I mean, I get it, but. And RVD only RVD shows up like in two months. Yeah, it was hilarious though because I just knew Heyman was like, "Fuck!" They like purposely oh like stop. Like I know Vince. It was like a rib probably on Heyman. Like yeah, they definitely told Heyman before the show, "If you call the Van Terminator, we're gonna fucking kill you." Let's show this and make him call it and say it's the greatest thing he's ever seen in his life. Yeah, it's awesome. Fucked up. That was fantastic. JR says, I hope you can hear us. I know you got a lot on your mind. Uh, cover your Street Fighter Mania, the situation with your mother, and your other projects with WCW. That's like a Q&A question. <laughs> <laughs> Asking all the questions at once. <laughs> Shane said, last night was awesome. You know, as it relates to my father, I'm a little conflicted. It's unnatural for a son to beat on a father, and it's unnatural for a father to beat on a son. But I'm happy my mother was there. There's also a crazy echo uh, during this, I don't know yeah. if anyone in the fucking building can actually hear Shane. Yes. Yeah, so the way they have it, Mike, is like it's to the WWF cameras, but it's also to the live crowd in the New York thing too. So the New York crowd can hear him too, but they're also fucking excited to be on television. But it's on a delay, right, or something. Yeah. Like- so it's like the the feed to the camera is faster than the feed to the live crowd. I and then see, the live yeah. crowd is fucking happy that they're on TV and they're just chanting like WCW Shane McMahon, let's go. Yeah. Woo. You Dude, I feel like shit. it's not, there's, there's probably maybe a handful of WCW chants in the history of life. Like that's not a chant you hear. No, they, to be honest, I don't think WCW crowd was really chanters. I don't remember them chanting a lot of, things in WCW. Now that I think not, about it. You know Besides what, Goldberg, like, that was about the only thing. Sure, yeah, yeah, And yeah. that was only because they force-fed that with, you know, yeah, Eric right Bischoff putting That's in. a fucking crazy point. Like, you know, there's... Even during in-ring promos, there's not... Like, maybe you suck chance, maybe? Yeah, but not but like, even, even that. But there's no, like, thing. asshole or anything like that. Like, that's Maybe right. towards, I, like, the Russo era, the maybe end. with, yeah, like... Yeah, maybe, uh, yeah. Because, you know, they just copied Vince, but... Mostly it was, yeah, this is the first time I think I've ever heard in my life, WCW, WCW. It might be the only time. That was crazy. That was insane. Uh, Shane says, the one person that's supposed to love my mother unconditionally is my father, and the only person my father loves is himself. And then they chant WCW. I was like, oh, shit. Shane says, now that Mania is over and my mother is doing okay, we are talking about WCW. And that's what I'm focusing on now. Things are starting to shape up nicely. Stay tuned. Things are going to get very interesting. And this time, Dad, if you can hear me, I hope that mom kicks you in the place that hurts a little bit more than the gonads. I hope she hurts you in the checkbook, which is, I right. think that happens. Right? mom then, takes you to the cleaners. Do they do the, is the divorce thing after this or has that already happened? I don't know. Cause I'm so confused cause Vince wants a divorce, but then he doesn't and he goes with Trish and then all this, uh, I don't know. Sure. Linda wanted a divorce. I don't remember who's divorced. Yeah. Who I want point. a divorce. I, I remember that. I don't think they ever <laughs> actually get divorced, though. They always want a divorce, but they never. I don't. Think well, they, they are really... now. Why not? Why not? Ah, or are they, brother? Who oh, knows? maybe not, brother. <laughs> uh, we go backstage. Michael Cole is interviewing The Rock, and Cole says, "Rock," and he just stares at the floor <laughs> forever. I don't know what happened here. Line. <laughs> yeah, line. Yeah, uh, Cole says, considering the shock and mania and the comments of Austin, and Rock cuts him off, and he says, "Stone cold." You don't want to give a reason. The Rock knows why you did what you did because you know deep down inside, one-on-one, man-to-man, you know damn well you can't beat The Rock. Stone Cold, that's something that eats you up inside. You gave The Rock all you had, and after every chair shot and stunner, The Rock kicked out. And after every kick out, The Rock saw the fear in your eyes. The Rock saw a look of relief when Vince McMahon came walking down the aisle. So, Austin, if you got the guts, if you got the balls to meet The Rock in the ring tonight with the state of the mind The Rock's in, Austin... You say you don't owe the people anything. Well, The Rock owes the people something. He owes them whipping your candy ass all over the Lone Star State. That's uh, bringing us to our main event here, which just before that, they show Austin hanging out between two trailers in his gear with the belt. I said, what the fuck is he doing? It was kind here? of a cool shot. Like if they would have got it was earlier, cool. if it would have been a little bit earlier when he wasn't standing there, but when he started walking, walking and they had through, the two it trailers cool, yeah. and it looked kind of cool. It was like a shot I don't think I see usually. The the camera is usually pretty low for shots like that too, which is something I uh, I guess I never consider. Like the the creative direction for for WWF, especially at this point, is is pretty fucking on point. 
Yeah, they they could make anything a backstage walking area. Like we said uh, back in the day, they had just pipe and drape <laughs> randomly. Pipe and drape there, randomly, yeah, you're walk right. Through and yeah. backstage. But <laughs> just having the two trucks was like a cool spot. I bet they have people yeah. like day of scouting locations. All right, we'll do a walking scene here. We'll do a thing here. We'll do here. That's Probably awesome. Good idea. We need to fucking yeah. do that more. Yeah, we need we need more time on our hands. We need more it. people. <laughs> <laughs> Well, it's time for the main event, The Rock versus Stone Cold. WWF title on the line, Steel Cage match. And uh, Vince comes out and introduces Stone Cold to the ring after The Rock does his entrance. And uh, The Rock is not letting Austin get in the ring. He's fucking standing right by the cage door. The Rock tries to get out of the ring to leave to catch Austin off guard, but Austin slams the door into his head. Oh, my God. They start fighting around the ring, around the announce table. Austin is throwing him into the fucking cage wall. Rock is fucking bleeding. Good juice here. I, I love a good Monday Night Raw yeah, juice. Good, good stuff. Uh, the Austin, by the way, isn't really getting booed that much, I don't think, yet. No, he's, they're in fucking Texas still, man. It's crazy. It's yeah, the, crazy, crazy shit here. They're still cheering for The Rock a little bit, though, but they're yeah, not booing they Austin. Like the Rock. They yeah. really aren't. They're, they're not buying they into this dislike, turn yet. Yeah. They don't dislike either of them yet. No, yeah, really. So we get back into the ring here. Uh, Austin slingshots Rock into the buckle and then hits him with a spine buster leg slam that JR called it, <laughs> which is right. a spine buster. <laughs> uh, Vince hands Austin a chair and Austin does the WrestleMania 17 chair spot on Rock again, just fucking pounding away at him, which it, Rock gets Austin a sharpshooter. Vince eventually gets into the ring, but the ref is distracted because of this. Austin is tapping out in the sharpshooter, and JR is flipping out. I've never seen that before. Austin is tapping. Rock hits a spine brush on Austin. He throws the elbow pad over the top of the cage to do the people's Good elbow, visual. which I, awesome. I love that. I thought that was so fucking cool. Uh, Rock pins Austin, and Vince pulls the ref out of the ring, and he points at the ref and says, don't do that. <laughs> Tim White. Shoves Vince down though. By the way, he shoves him down in the he match. He does, but Vince floor, is not out me. though. Vince is not out though. No. Uh, speaking of Tim White, Tim White, the first referee to go into the WWE Hall of Fame this year. That's awesome. He's Love going in. Shouts out Tim White. Shouts out to all the Tim White segments where he tried to kill himself. That's not very that was wise. Awesome. That was awesome. <laughs> Great fucking angle. Uh, so Tim White gets him back in the ring. Rock hits the rock bottom on Austin. One, two, Vince fucking attacks Tim White. <laughs> I said, holy shit, man. Come on, dude. Rock gets up, uh, stops Vince from leaving, and he throws Vince into the cage. Uh, he fucking uh, closes the cage door, jumps on Vince crazy style, punches him on the ground, flips him off. Uh, he goes for the rock bottom on Vince, but Austin low blows him, stomps him out. Uh, Vince beats up Tim White, and here comes... Triple H, he's pissed. The game. <sighs> he's peeling off four layers of jackets. <laughs> he's taking off everything. He's got the sledgehammer. All 30 of his jackets on the floor, lined up on the ramp as he comes down. Triple H gets in the ring, pushes Vince out of the way, goes face to face with Austin. And then Triple H hits Rock with the sledgehammer. Oh, oh my God. Son no. of a bitch. Josh, please don't tell me Triple H, Austin, and Vince were going all on the same page. Triple H is slamming the sledgehammer into the Rock's chest, punching away at him as Austin stomps him out. Uh, he throws Rock into the cage, pedigrees Rock. Austin fucking hits the rope and does the fuck you elbow drop. Uh, there's no fucking finish to this match, is there? They just no. fucking whoop his ass. Yeah, they do not. They, they just call it, I guess the match is just over. They don't really do a Because the ref either. is out. Yeah, Tim White's down, no contest, uh, nobody yeah. wins. I guess Brock wins by default, maybe, I don't know, interference I guess, or yeah, not. maybe, but it was no DQ in theory, so I don't know how that works. But uh, Rock is fucking bleeding. Triple H picks Rock up. Austin flips him off, hits a stunner. Triple H and Austin both do the Austin lay down and talk shit into your face thing, <laughs> which is a crazy visual. Austin calls for a beer. They all three beer bash in the ring. Vince Ch raises Chucks the beers over. Good throws, by the way. Yeah, good beers throw from uh, Mark Mark Eaton, I want to say his yeah, name sounds was. good. He's eating those beers. Mark. I know that. Yeah, eating them. Mark, it was a Mark Eaton. It was Mark Eaton. Good for me. And JR, to take it home, says, I cannot believe this. The rattlesnake, the game, and the boss are one vile, ugly, nasty page. And what are we going to do about <laughs> it? I was like, that is such a fucking awesome call. That That's was so good. fucking that sick. They are a two-man power trip right yeah. now in what the What a ring. great name. Two-man power trip? Yeah, that is awesome. Yeah. That is good. But also, I like that a lot. if you think about it in hindsight... And you look back at the business. This was a very WCW heel ending. 
Yeah, fair. <laughs> Which I fair don't point, want to put point. that connection, but like anybody That's, that would you're have not hated, wrong. Anybody that would have hated the bullshit of WCW and the heels always going and up. had to tune into this. And oh tuned my into god, this you're right. To like get something different, maybe. Sure. They saw this and they probably just didn't want to come back, which is fair yeah, enough. Yeah, you're right. But you're right. I would have tuned in to see where this is going, which I did. I did tune in to see where this was going to go. I mean, I was still an avid fucking watcher here. I mean, nothing was stopping me from fucking watching. No, no I think way. I think you know the angle goes somewhere. They they it's interesting to say the least. First time sure. ever they're teaming up, Austin Seal, all that. But I'm just saying, it's like a if you're just a WCW fan who's like, okay, my my brain. Yeah, is let's done. try this out. I let's, haven't watched Raw in a while. Let's try this out, and then. Fuck, bro. That is what you get. So, uh, in terms of ratings here, Raw, 5.65 for this Raw. Okay. Um, Which is the first time they've gone unopposed in fucking however many years, right? Uh, oh, yeah, uh, yeah. Other than, like, you know, the preempted bullshit. Right. So, they go from a 4.7 the week before that to a 5.65, then a 5.4, uh, a 5.05. So, they stay around there for a while. Then, in May, it drops down to a 4.5. Uh, then by June, we're at a 4.2. They're bouncing around. Uh, October, they're at a 3.9. Yeah, Jeez. so it's... it's uh, You can slowly but surely through the year of 2001, you can see that things are not going well. Yeah, they got some of those WWE strays to come over to watch at the beginning, I feel like, yeah. and then it just... That 5.65 was definitely, like, you know, curiosity, right? Like... Yeah, you had to see what was going to happen. And and I yeah. and another thing was, like, they didn't really even once mention WCW at all. Like, they could... Other than Shane. They could have done, like, a... Oh, well, uh, now Shane... You know, they didn't even do, like, a WCW went out of business last week. Uh, we're on a... You or, know, like, they, Shane said, hey, if you're a WCW fan, you're going to want to tune in next week. Oh, just so you know, by the way, the week after this show is the Linda divorce segment. Oh, okay. okay yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. So uh, Lance Storm makes his first WCW wrestler appear uh, running during a match on May 28th. Uh, wow. War. Hugh Morris made his debut on June 4th. By attacking Edge, King of the Ring, Booker T gets in the triple threat match. So it must have legit just been they don't have guys signed. They have just have nobody. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. I just looking at it the way I see it, I, they should have at least had a graphic or, you know, recap, you know, Nitro went off the air. I guess they didn't even Something to grab they, the WCW fans. Something. They really, I guess they didn't even have the tape library, you know, from what I'm hearing here. No, is they just own the name and the logo, right? So they couldn't even show, like, the final Nitro footage or anything either? Is that true? I guess. I guess so. I mean, they did that, you know, the the simulcast thing, but I don't know how that worked. I guess that's, like, WWF television. Like, sure, that part of yeah. Nitro, I'm sure, is owned by WWF because yeah. they were there. Sure, Could have showed, like, sure. Shane Shona. I don't know. I just feel like that whole... You're them- right, though. Something to grab the WCW fan definitely... I don't know what it is, you know, obviously, you know, hindsight is fucking, you know, 2020, but like, surely there could have been something. Anything to grab that attention of the WCW fan that would be tuning in for the first time. However, Vince probably was just kind of, ah, let's take a, you know, like, let's, uh. Yeah, he was probably, the, we won the war, who fucking cares? Let's just you know take what I mean? a moment. What never, can go wrong? Let's never mention WCW ever again. We just put yeah, that company right. out of business. I don't know, but yeah. Yeah. Yeah, kind of crazy though the way they ended this, and you know. But yeah, super. Uh, it's just so interesting to like see how a Raw after WrestleMania is here compared to what it is now. Like this is like, there's like nothing going on here really. <laughs> like it's, there's some fun stuff and like, but like you know, there's obviously like where they're going for backlash, but nothing like crazy. Like no big debuts or anything. Like completely yeah, no different. No debuts, no returns. Compared to no like what nothing. ten years later, they're doing like all that shit, right? Yeah, they, uh, this, again, like I said, this was just like business as usual in the company. Like, okay, yeah. here's the next storyline. Where's another role? Yeah, yeah, which is kind of crazy. But yeah, we get to the invasion eventually in the summer and sure. it takes a while, but we get there. Well, there you go. That is it for this episode. That is it for that uh, review of the April 2nd, 2001 episode of Monday Night Raw. Yeah.